in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed praise the lord there are believers who come before god with emergencies they don't need to learn any law they don't need to learn any principle they can learn when the situation has been solved the urgency will not allow them to give god their attention so you're not going to bring you're not going to help them by trying to say oh you are in a situation you know listen listen um, you'll be learning a lot today. You hear people say things like miracle alert and all of that. Um, God's idea is not to keep you in the realm of alert. You know that. Um, you're not going to be able to feed your family just with alerts. But that there are people who are in situations where it's a waste to give them any book on wealth. The urgency at that point requires a miracle here and now. And so God must be allowed to step in and let them experience his hand. And then when they are at ease, they can now sit down and learn the ways of God that makes for sustainable results. If every miracle comes just through the understanding of principles alone, then many believers will die and never live to learn all they need to be victorious. God is that merciful to solve your problems while you learn. God is that merciful to let you experience his power while you are growing. We cannot, we, we can't peg everybody to receive results only at their level of transformation. It is dangerous because there are people who, um, they are where they are not because of anything of themselves. They have come from backgrounds that will not allow them. Let me give you an instance. A man of 60, 70 years, intellectually speaking, his rate of assimilation will be a lot slower than a young man of 20 to 25. Is that true? And so if God is to allow that man learn and know everything about breakthrough, to experience breakthrough, that man will probably need the next 10 or 15 years of consistent mentorship. So unique to that man's condition, he will experience a dimension of God's mercy that only his age range can allow. You will be surprised to find out that whether he understands what the preacher is understanding or not, God will route him to be under the grace preaching, not under the knowledge. He will not get results just by understanding because he probably will be sleeping when the message is going on. And God's mercy is wise enough to shift him to a zone where he can still be a partaker of the hand of God. This is very powerful. Now, if that guy begins to allow you use his life as a standard, you are in trouble. Because the man is not even aware that something special was done to him. So he will say, you can see my life. I didn't do anything. God just keeps blessing me any day. And then you will try to do that at 21. And you will be very surprised. When God vetoes his principles, he's not neglecting them, is how far his love can go. It matters that we know God. There is a lot of ignorance in the body of Christ. Not ignorance in terms of absence of knowledge. Ignorance in terms of ill-constructed spiritual information. Information that was not constructed properly to provide victory. So we have a little here and a little there like materials for building a house but not well structured. 
random spiritual information scattered around our spirits and our mind and we fish out anyone in the face of danger we continue to fish them out one by one hoping at least one can work but platforms like this were provided to give us accuracy so that your understanding will be very exact you are not guessing This is your house, your home. We welcome you, Lord, we welcome you. This is your house, your home. We welcome you today. Sing it one more time with faith in your heart. This is your your home we welcome you lord we welcome you this is your house your home we welcome you today so come up here that is an attempt to challenge us to rise beyond the dimensions of God that we have seen and known to a place of greater perfection, to a place of greater accuracy. Revelations chapter 4. Revelations chapter 4. I want you to continue to believe the things that you are learning. The integrity of God is behind the things you are learning. And I give you a guarantee that if you pay attention to labor in the word, to know God and to know his ways, you will be remarkably surprised at how powerful, how powerful God can be when given space through obedience and alignment in the life of a man. When I don't have results in an area, I make sure that I minimize conversing in that area because I do not have the authorization to speak. It is foolish to argue when you do not have results. Our world, many believers are confused today because of the interruption that the pride of resultless people continue to bring in the process of mentorship. That while God is teaching people principles, here comes another dimension of pride in ignorance, interrupting the pace of conviction and assimilation. If I had my way and I had to mentor believers, I would isolate them. I would take it like a system of quarantine somewhere and then we'll sign a disclaimer that if by listening to this man of God for these years and obeying under God you do not get these results you hold the person liable many of us do not learn because there are interruptions to our convictions just when you are about to settle on something as true, here comes a message that delays your believing it. So you start another journey of six months in argument based on what I've had now. Should I believe or should I not believe? While you are, you are debating, you are suffering and your family members are paying the price. Take the risk. Trust something. Take the risk. Is worth the risk to throw yourself and say, let me at least believe something. God, help me. If I fail, let your mercy be there to pick me up. But take the risk. Don't stand in foolishness today. You are here. Tomorrow you are there. You are arguing. And while you are doing that, time is going. Take the risk. You must believe something. When Jesus met people who had convictions, he had respect for them. Although their convictions were on wrong philosophies, he respected the fact that they could peg their convictions on something exact. 
Are we together? Mm. A man who does not have conviction in anything is a dangerous man. Is a dangerous man. Don't stay near that person. It's better to have convictions in the wrong thing. That's why it was easy for God to convert Saul. He believed he was doing God's service by persecuting the Christians. And when God revealed himself, he switched immediately. There was no embarrassment. But the scribes and Pharisees, they wouldn't let Jesus alone to preach. They would be at his crusades. And yet they would never believe. You see how difficult it was? The woman by the well. Madam, you have seven husbands, six husbands. Yes, sir. This and that and that. Yes, sir. And she was changed immediately. The madman in Gadara, you have demons. Yes, sir. You need them to leave. Yes, sir. The demons too spoke. Go and leave the man in peace. And ten cities were saved. Don't be near God. Be connected to him. It's dangerous to be around. You will see everything that is happening, but you will never partake of it. God is not asking for proximity. He's asking for intimacy. Just because you are near God and you are aware of what he can do does not mean you will ever experience him. Are we together? Revelations 4. After this, verse 1, I looked and behold, a door was opened in heaven and the first voice which I heard was as of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show you things that must be thereafter. We'll stop from verse 4. And immediately I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne, and he that sat was to look upon like Jasper. Remember? That this was not the first time he was beholding the face of Jesus in Revelation chapter 1 he saw at a level now he's seeing again and he's seen something different that he did not see before and there was rainbow round about the throne in sight like unto an emerald verse 4 and round about the throne were four and twenty seats and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting clothed in white raiment and they had on their head crowns of gold. Praise the Lord. He said, come up hither and I will show you. Come up hither. So the reason why I am asking you to rise is because there is something I want to do to your sight. Please pay attention. That the growth of a believer is based on spiritual illumination. That in this kingdom, your growth is based on the access to the truths, the light that you can see much more than here. Come up hither. He didn't say come. You don't need to come up hither to here. Like those who are outside now, without the projector stand, they can hear, but they cannot see. Are we together now? You do not need to come up hither to hear. But if you want to see, Habakkuk said, I will stand upon my watch and I will set myself upon the tower. Why? So that I will see what he shall say unto me. Not I will hear, I will see light, growth through spiritual illumination. It is a big deal to God that the eyes of our understanding be enlightened. Please listen. The victory that has been wrought for us in Christ will remain a story until illumination opens us up to the experience. Please understand this. The mysteries of the kingdom were not designed to remain mysteries. So when we say they are mysteries, we're not just saying some hidden things that were locked up. God desires them to be seen. That's why he gave us the spirit. Your growth in the kingdom will take more than desire. Please listen. Your growth in the kingdom will be on the strength of the quality 
of your spiritual illumination. Ephesians chapter 3, we we'll read from verse 8. Apostle Paul is speaking to the church in Ephesus. Please give it to us. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 8. Look up, please. It's projected. It says, Unto me, who am less than the least of the saints, is this grace given. What is the grace? That I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Next verse. We're reading tonight. It says, And to make, read with me, all men see. Stop. It's a ministry given to a man to make men see. All men, not some men. Not to make men of God see. You are mandated by the grace of God to make men see. Because it is only as we behold that we are changed. Hearing does not change people. As we behold him as in a mirror, the Bible says the glory of God. We are changed. Transformation is difficult until you can see a reference. Please understand what I'm saying. So that in this kingdom, growth is true spiritual illumination. So come up hither is a call, a divine call by the Spirit of God to the saints to rise to a higher realm that can allow your eyes to see, to see, to allow your eyes to see the deep things, the Bible says, the deep things of God. Because when you see higher, then your life will become that. And listen, listen. Success generally in life is, is a measure of what you attract to your life by who you have become. You have to understand this. It is not so much of what you do but who you have become. The realities that you attract to your life on the strength of the new versions of yourself you continue to become. And that happens through knowledge, through light. Spiritual illumination. This is where the major ministry of the Holy Spirit. Do you know, listen, listen, listen. It is very easy to be born again. The Bible says so. That if you believe with your heart the Lord Jesus and you confess with your mouth that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Are we together now? Is the word sozo. That you are saved by believing in your heart and then confessing, verbalizing it. But then when the Holy Spirit comes, listen, the if you would permit me to use the word, the most difficult assignment of the Holy Spirit in the saints is the, the rigor of babysitting the believer until he gets to a point where he allows the Holy Spirit to show him the light that it takes to rise in experience. For many of us, we can be born again. We receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit pray in tongues and we believe that by that initiation we have become Pentecostals as we call ourselves and then we stay there and never grow and never see and continue to believe that just because time is passing and you can say I've been born again five years they say how long did you know the Lord you say five years that's not a very correct answer it may be correct historically but it's not correct in terms of transformation. You are not five years in the Lord. It's your results that will show how old you are in the Lord. You are five years from the day you got born again historically. But that may not be a measure of your true age. In the realm of the spirit, our age is measured by the light that we command. We excel in light, not in time. The degree of spiritual illumination that you receive in your life is a measure of your growth. So we continue to flatter ourselves that just because historically we can count a time period by earth's timing from when we consciously gave our lives to Christ, we believe that automatically as time passes, growth is happening. No, the only dimension of growth that is automatic is biological growth. 
Every other kind of growth must be engaged through knowledge. You grow intellectually by assimilating knowledge. Knowledge along the path of a field. Is that true? So you can find an adult who is 20 years, respectfully so, but cannot speak English. Is that true? Cannot speak another language. The person is an adult by biological standards, but when you shift to an intellectual standard, that person is a child. So the passage of time, chronos, does not just make for spiritual growth automatically. The same way it does not make for growth in other aspects. Growth is engaged. It does not happen by default. Please understand this. This is where the pride of many, many Christians lie. We convince ourselves, and you know sometimes, I'll be talking about it shortly, the, the, the danger of the ritual of tradition. Just because you have been known to be around the things of God for a long time, usually when an election or an appointment in church, you understand, eldership or a deacon, most likely you will be the suitable candidate just to honor the longevity of time you spend around the things of God. But it may be the wrongest decision that may have been made. Oh, this man has been 20 years in the Lord. He's a veteran in the things of God. And while they are talking, God is saying, what, what are you talking about here? Who is the veteran? A veteran is a master. One who by reason of his life and the testimonies that come has been able to test the truth. That which we have seen. That which we have heard. That which our hands have handled of the word of life. That's what we teach. Because some of us may need to honestly admit that from the day you got born again, this year was the first step. Although it's 10 years. You got born again 10 years ago. But the first correct result producing step started in 2019. So technically, you are about to be one years old. As far as your age with respect to transformation is concerned. Imagine if that one year old man is your man of God. Is the one who was given the mandate to raise you spiritually. Are we together? With gaps in his understanding. What do you think you will become? He will make you distrust what you already know before you met him. The confidence he has in his ignorance will affect you. The vacillations in his understanding will threaten your conviction. The Bible says to be steadfast, to be immovable. It doesn't mean to be rigid so that you cannot change. But that when you find truth and it has been vetted as truth, stay there. Stay there and be there. For instance, if you have believed that there are many gods and Jesus is just one of them, that's a conviction. But now when you are exposed to the truth that there is no other name under heaven given to man by which we must be saved, now you have the flexibility to change. And when you find out in truth by the Spirit, and by the testimony of brethren around you that Jesus is truly the way, the truth, and life. You stay there in life and in death. This is my position about the pathway to salvation. That means if I have the opportunity to debate with an atheist, I'm not about to make some historical jargons. This is my conviction by the Spirit that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. You cannot understand this reality scientifically. You can only open up your heart for the Spirit of grace to minister this as an encounter. Are we together? To make all men see. To make all men see. To make all men see. I want to deal with something tonight that the Lord put in my heart. Still in an attempt to bring us into an accurate understanding of the ways of God. The danger of what the Bible calls the traditions of men. 
there is such a thing in scripture called the traditions of men and the bible is not careful to reveal to us how far this concept this way of life can can interrupt the rising of the saints to the pinnacle of their christian experience colossians chapter 2 please and verse 8 Beware lest any man spoil you. The word spoil you there is to make a prey out of you. Like you go to war and you, they say you spoil the people. You conquer the land and take their treasures and add to your treasures. He said beware lest any man spoil you. Through what? Philosophy and vain deceit. After the traditions of men after the rudiments of this world and not after Christ. Now this concept has been interpreted from the lens of all manner of you know all kinds of theological dimensions but it is true that there is something called the traditions of men and that the Bible says that it can make men become praise. One more scripture. Matthew chapter 15 we'll read from verse 2 Matthew chapter 15 now some gentlemen just came to harass Jesus and his disciples watch the story we're reading to verse 9 why do thy disciples transgress what the traditions of the elders someone is asking Jesus a question now so let's listen to what Jesus is about to say for they wash not their hands when they eat bread three but he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? What do you do? You transgress the commandment of God by your tradition. Next verse. For God commanded saying, Honor your father and your mother, and he that cursed father or mother, let him die the death. Five. But ye say, Whosoever shall say to his father or mother, um, it is a gift by whatsoever thou shalt, you know, thou mightest be profited by me. Six, we're reading to nine. And honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. That means if you can bribe your way out of honor and be free, tradition created that concept. You, you get the point now? Thus, ye have made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. Please take note of this. Let's just finish up. Ye hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, uh -huh, These people draweth near to me with their mouth, and honoured me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Last verse. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. In rising to superior spiritual dimensions, the Bible tells us that we are going to confront a demon. We are going to confront a, a resistance. Are we together now? And the Bible calls that resistance not Satan. He doesn't even call the resistance um, sin. He calls it what? The traditions of men. What is it exactly? What is the tradition of men? Let me tell you this. The goal of this teaching is not to produce rebels. Let me clear the air straightforward before I begin to teach. The idea, listen carefully please. The idea is not to get up in self-pride and move around and begin to fight people who seem to sustain revelations that are inferior to yours. I think I need to put this disclaimer very clearly. Are we together? The idea any listen any lifting in the spirit that makes you arrogant and makes you a difficult person and extracts the love dimension from you has been corrupted because growth in the spirit that comes from God must also come with his nature of humility and love are we together these two things must they are the litmus tests of the purity of your spiritual growth and your revelation. The humility, the Bible calls it humbleness of heart. And then the richness of the love of God in you. 
that if I claim to grow spiritually and the more I am learning, the more pride is also growing in me, it could be that I am being indoctrinated by the vain babblings of men. Revelation that comes from God in its purest form. Number one produces humility. Number two produces love. You now look at those who did not have the privilege of having that truth from the lens of compassion. It's important that I say this because I think this is one of the reasons why and what we call the new move of God, if not managed, will become another dimension of religion too. Everybody in the body of Christ right now has given himself the ministry of correcting every other body. So that's what is going on in the body of Christ now. Everybody who has access to the pulpit is correcting someone, young or old. That's what is trending, correction. Everybody is showing how everybody is wrong. It's terrible. Spiritual knowledge should not culminate in dividing the body it should not culminate in producing arrogant people. No. Paul, at the height of his revelation, he said, I who am the least of all the brethren, is this grace given? It is a grace to make men see, to open their eyes. When I rebuke them, it is a grace. When I correct them, it is a grace. It's more than a desire. You've heard me say, correcting the body of Christ is a grace. Just because you observe error does not give you the fortitude and the authorization to correct. Because in correcting, many people have begun another error. It's easy for error to start. It just starts as an opinion strongly received. And very soon you will forget about the reason why you started it. And enjoy the new celebrity status you gain for being controversial. There is a grace to correct the body. There is a grace to adjust people and bring them within the dimensions of truth. So I'm putting this disclaimer very strongly so that you don't mix every young preacher and just believe that all together they are carrying out a campaign either to rebel against fathers or to rebel against denominations. No, my position as a person about the body of Christ is very, very clear. I will never dishonor the body to communicate truth. I was sent to the body. Are we together? It matters that we understand this. So that if the things I say sound difficult, for instance, then you, you refer to what I just said, that he's speaking not from the standpoint of sarcasm, the goal is to wean us out of imperfection, to bring us into maturity. Come up here, a realm of maturity where you come out of certain things that can peg your growth, hence your results. It is true that there are many things that need to be adjusted in the body of Christ. It is true that there are many mainstream beliefs that need to be edited and adjusted. Please listen carefully. It is true that there are many things that have been proposed by we preachers, well-meaning, sincere mostly, that still needs correction. Are we together now? But it is also true that an attempt to correct other things is an attack. There are things that are ordinances, no matter how con controversial they sound. Calling the body higher must not be from the lens of our convenience. It must be from the lens of God's truth. That means that I will be a wicked man of God to teach you only what is convenient, either based on my educational perspective. Are we together? Let me give you an instance. Let's assume that because of my philosophical standpoint about the miraculous, I don't believe the miraculous. Did you know that every time I read and we reach the miraculous, I will just jump it and wave it away. And sitting under me, you will find out that you are deficient in that level of understanding. 
because I do not believe it. I'm not interested in it. It's not working in my life, for instance. So I trivialize it and I force you to trivialize it. A good man of God must be able to stand and teach truth even if it hurts you. That means your goal is the lifting of the people more than the preservation of your name and your reputation. This is a faithful servant of God. That if for instance, I have thought that healing is wrong, miracles are wrong, and now I have found the truth, I must sustain the courage to say I have found out that God is still a miracle worker. Someone may look and say, what is miracle a lot? Nonsense. There's no such thing as that. You now see. It is true that believers were not designed to live based on miracle a lot. But it would be foolish to ignore the fact that there is a provision in God's economy where he can come through for people. So in an attempt to, an attempt to transit you to a level of greater financial stability, I just extract away the spirituality of wealth. And I just let you know, go and get a job and be, and be nice. You will be ready for a shock because this world is full of spirits. Full of what? That's right. Then on the other hand, if all we do is to tell you miracle alert and that's all you will get. The end of it is that we will leave you a superstitious and a confused people. Are you seeing that? You will never build one bungalow in your entire lifetime with that philosophy. You cannot have sustainable results. Why? Because your mind has been, spe has been pegged around the, the, the ignorance that it is God's, God's, it is based on God to do everything he wants to do. That's not true. Are you understanding what I'm sharing tonight? The word tradition comes from the Greek word paradosis. P-A-R-A-D-O-S-I-S. -P it can be translated ordinances. It can be translated precepts. That's where we get the word tradition. So it talks of ordinances. It talks of precepts, methodologies that were created by men. Either as a product of culture or as a product of pride, or as a product of aberrated encounters that were not consistent with the word. Listen very carefully. There are many methodologies today that came as a result of supposed encounters. Look up, please. Look up, please. Look up, please. Let me balance something now. And especially around, respectfully, let me call what we call... Um, is it fair to call it the holiness movement? That several people supposedly have gone to hell and have gone to heaven and they have brought forth standards. Many of them as emotional and impacting as they look are not consistent with the conditions provided that by scripture that makes for a believer to make heaven. Are you seeing that now? And if you are not careful... And, and by this, I'm not necessarily even talking of things that pertain on to dressing and all of that. Those ones are established truths that were there long before. I know people that claim to have gone to hell and saw almost every man of God that, that has transited in glory. Now, that kind of thing, the, the vision receiver does not know that he or she is under an attack. Just because you went to the realm of the spirit does not mean you are free. The word of God is still Lord, even over the realm of the spirit. You have to understand this. You can travel to a dimension that you have never been before and see all kinds of things. Remember that in the realm of the spirit, anything you see there is higher than what you have known on earth and you can easily receive it and come back with doctrines that later will become traditions, precepts, ordinances. There are people who have returned with revelations that they saw believers who did not tithe in hell. 
I don't believe that. There is nowhere in scripture that shows that non-tithing takes a man to hell. There are people, for instance, who have returned and, and have given all kinds of propositions that they saw people who had given their lives to Christ. Just because of issues here and there in their lives, they still found them in hell. I don't believe that. <clears throat> listen. Jesus, listen very carefully. I teach you sound doctrine. When Lazarus, listen carefully, Lazarus and the rich man, the rich man made a request and he asked, he asked Jesus, he said, please let Lazarus come back to life huh? and let Lazarus come and preach to my brethren and tell them that I am there in Hades, the place of the dead. And then he says, no, they have the law and the prophets. That means, he said, even if Lazarus should come back to life, they will not believe. But sufficient is the law and the prophets. Listen to them. I still speak to men who are in the earth realm. And I still have the truth of scripture that can guide men. The average believer now is not sure whether he will make heaven or not. It's like we're waiting to see. Let the trumpet just sound and then I will, if I'm qualified, I will know. But it's wrong. When a woman is pregnant, she knows. When a student graduates, he knows. When you are hungry, you know. When you are full, you know. When you are crying, you know. Why would salvation be that vague? It means something. Listen to what I'm saying. You know I gave you a disclaimer. It is not about tell them or anything. I'm teaching you truth. I'm bringing you to a point of certainty where you know that you know that you know. Are we together? Yes. There are many concepts in the body of Christ as it is now that will destroy the saints if not adjusted, if not upgraded, and sometimes if not totally taken out of the way. Please listen. I will just run through a few of these concepts with you and then if God grants grace, we can touch a few and pray. Am I boring you? Mm. Number one, there is a big problem with the biblical, understanding the biblical concept of greatness. Greatness is one of the most controversial issues right now in the body of Christ. What is the standard of greatness? What is the difference between mediocrity or where is the line between mediocrity and contentment? Please listen very carefully. Where is the line between striving to be all that God designed for you to be and lost? You have to pay attention because in both cases you will find scripture that encourage both. You will find scriptures that encourage you. Scriptures like the path of the just is as a shining light. Speak to me, believers. That shines ever brighter unto the perfect day. And yet you will find scriptures like godliness with contentment is great gain. So while you want to quickly rise to the shining light, here comes another scripture. Godliness with contentment is great gain. Then it continues by saying we brought nothing to this world. And it is certain that, listen carefully, I'm teaching you something that will make you a sound believer. It is certain that we can take nothing out of this world. But that having food and raiment, let us be content. So why do I need a master's? Why do I need a PhD? Why do I need to be the highest professor in that department? Here the Bible is telling me. Are we together? I read a scripture that says, I search for a man, you know, to stand in the gap. And I say, Lord, I'm the person I will rise. The next verse you are reading is, teach us to number our days. That we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Any dimension that you want to look at life from, the Bible seems to support it. That means there has to be a grace to put things in order. 
please listen to me very carefully because many innocent people people destroyed houses that they started to lintel level somebody came with a vision and another person will carry bulldozer and scatter everything and say this i will and will be a missionary by the next week he will carry a bell and a cassock and stand by the road with no one listening to him ringing the bell and shouting and say repent i know what i saw he it may not be a lie but something about the inaccuracy of spiritual communication has destroyed that man 10 years later he will find out again he was wrong while he did that his children did not go to school while he did that the land he had has been taken away by a thief and they built a hotel on it life may not allow you to make certain mistakes and come back to correct yourself that's why god is teaching you this now there are people who made some of these mistakes and had the luxury of returning back but you can't return others who believe what you said before what is the balance about greatness this greatness thing has been fought another concept what is God's idea of spiritual maturity? Everybody claims to be matured in the body of Christ. At least biologically, there's no confusion. Our little ones cannot claim they are mature. Their foolishness will be obvious. Just give them five minutes. They will do something that will prove immediately that they are children. And an adult, no matter how foolish an adult is, you will not become a child again. You are an adult, it's too late. You are just an unwise adult. Are we together? But spiritually, listen, how can I know that this person is matured spiritually? There are many parameters we have put in the body of Christ. And many of them are largely not consistent with God's idea. Let me give you another, another concept. What exactly is our call as believers? What is our mandate as believers? This has been a big confusion in the body of Christ. Please pay attention. What is our mandate? Others say our mandate is to take over everywhere. Others say you are not taking over anything. Our mandate is just to be born again and to wait until we leave. When are you going to take over Dubai? Have you seen that? There are many people who argue that our mandate is to make Nigeria become like Dubai. The kingdoms of this world. And others say, look, Nigeria will not be Dubai. Stop dreaming. Win souls and make sure souls are saved and rapturable. And both concepts have biblical backings. Please listen. I love to teach these kinds of things. What is our call as believers? Is your call to be a lecturer or to be a preacher or to be a soul winner? Ask the average believer on the street, what is your call? Some will say to win souls. Nothing but souls. Another person will say to, to, to build a house for God. What does that mean? Next concept. The subject of faith. The subject of what? Faith. F-A-I-T-H. Faith. The subject of faith. Where is the balance? What is God's idea of faith? It's been a disturbing concept. You notice that there are so many people in the body of Christ who tell you, look, all this faith, faith thing, leave it away. And others say, no, 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 no. The Bible says this is the victory that overcomes. It even says that just shall live by faith. Four times scattered through scripture. In one of the renditions, it says that just shall live by his faith. Next concept, our interpretation of tragedy and negative situations. Our interpretation of tragedy. I'm just giving you a few of them. There are many. <clears throat> the discussion is come up here. A higher level of more accurate spiritual illumination. And I'm showing you the things that have pegged our maturity in the body of Christ. Our inability to find stability in these areas. These are the areas that challenge our convictions again and again. 
vacillating concepts. What happens when a loved one dies? Another person says, no way. No way. There's no evil in God. And the person cannot die. Another person will say, I was in the hospital when I had the person saying, Lord, into your, your spirit, not spirit, into your hands, I commend my spirit. And he had the person. And the prayer seemed to be answered. He died immediately. And then another person says, no, 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 no. Every good and perfect gift comes from God. God cannot be the author of this death. Where is the balance as to the nature of God as far as interpreting tragic situations? In fact, there are many who it is so, it is so, um, it is even so extreme that anything at all that represents, even if your car stops on the road, based on the propositions that have been given, you have questions to answer. The first question is, where is your faith? The second question is, where is your God? Now, many believers are confused. And then there are others who just allow anything to happen as though believing that God is a miracle worker and believing that God is a way maker is a lie. We have extended it now to fight songs. We fight songs, remember? Everybody is fighting every song now. I guess we'll start singing scriptures directly. Just sing. At least nobody will fight scripture. Just open to Exodus chapter this and say, look. And he said this and that. We know we have passed from death to life. Just compose it so that nobody argues any concept. There are people who one little mistake, even linguistic mistake, is attacked. And while they are attacking the song, someone else is having an encounter with that same song. Rolling before God and shouting that song. Next concept. One of the very controversial ones again. The concept of fatherhood and mentorship. Fatherhood, mentorship, covering, partaking of a grace and so on and so forth it's a very serious concept in the body of Christ there are both sides of the pendulum when dealing with these issues there are people for instance who have made this issue of fatherhood and mentorship such a big deal as though even your salvation is determined by another man there are people who will not eat food until it is approved there are people who cannot travel until it is approved. When, when a woman is pregnant, her pastor knows first before her husband. And yet the Bible says what God has joined. Let no man. It didn't say let no spirit. put. That's a way of putting asunder. Because the man can say, well, that means that what you are trying to say in essence is that this child is not my own. And the same Bible says, wives, submit to your own husbands. There are members who salary the pastors know to the digital detail. That even their wives do not know. All of that is under the umbrella of fatherhood and mentorship. There are churches that are almost like cults. You cannot make up your mind that, look, I'm tired I love you, man of God, but I think I need to leave. I, I sense that God is calling me somewhere. Any other bad thing that happens to you by leaving, the man of God takes credit for it as his grace fighting you. Something is wrong. Listen very carefully. Remember the disclaimer I gave before I started? You now see why I gave it? Cult-like approaches of Christianity. A man of God can step into any house at any time. Peace be unto this house. And just say, what do you have? Oh, man of God, what do you want? Anything for you. Okay, a pounded yam and vegetable soup. Let me have goat meat. And, and you know, all, all kinds of things that we do. 
These are poisonous concepts. What of the ones that they collect? A, a, a member will receive the blessing from God and buy a new car and the pastor will collect it. What of houses that have been collected by people in the name of, uh, of, uh, of Isaac? Are you seeing that now? I'm addressing concepts with you. What of marriages that have broken as a result of the recommendation of a supposed father or a mentor? That you sit down and veto that I, as a man, I will never mention my name, I, as so, 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 as so man of God, I hereby don't like this marriage because the wife is not kind or nice to me and I use my spiritual authority to break this marriage and the son says yes sir your wish is my command is occultism what about accrediting life partners that a man can be with his wife and all of a sudden from nowhere the Geo's wife or the Geo can look and say, this guy is a serious partner in this church. This woman is coming to carry him out of the church. It is scattered. Dangerous and devilish. What of choosing for people where they should walk simply because of the selfishness of their service in your church? God gives someone open door of 250,000 in, in, in an oil company and he has another job of, of 35,000 35, near your neighborhood. And he said, I know God. I, God wants you here simply because you are the one in charge of sound. And I rather keep you there than to employ another person. What of turning members into masons to build, to build, please don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not fighting anybody. The message is called come up here. We are challenging concepts that fight our being accurate in the spirit. They are traditions of men. If I'm building this Koinonia cathedral and your head does not carry one block, that's how difficult it will remain on you. No, sir. No, sir. And you see members running to make sure at least one block is on their head. And I shake off every, every uh, um, 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 uh, what do we call it? every difficulty in my life now listen that also does not mean that by faith you can connect your service to breakthrough because people have done it they have connected their service to certain breakthroughs there is a provision in the dealings of god but it's not by threat and manipulation it's by revelation This is what is going on every Sunday in this country, in Africa, and around the world. What of the issue of seed sowing? I believe in giving. I believe in seed sowing. You are greedy, you don't sow seeds, you will go down. I guarantee you. God will not cause you. Design in the system, no matter how you argue. So I'm, I'm not here to bring all kinds of debates. Um, what is working for you? You keep it there and what is not working for you, you can change it if you want to. I don't like draw soup. I can't preach against, against my experience with draw soup is that we are not friends. Are we together now? Yes, but draw soup is your favorite, remember? And I'm, I'm so, I mean, two of us, pro, provided we are surviving. So you believe whatever constructs your success and leave it there. But one thing I know is that in the final analysis, you can do nothing against the truth but for the truth. But what about seed sowing? A man of God's birthday is announced one year to the birthday. As soon as one is finished, they start preparing. There are, there are circles where the man of God makes his wish. I want a Lincoln Navigator. Limited edition. How much is it? 85 million. And everybody begins, heads of department bring 10, 10, escorts bring 5, 5, and you know, all kinds of things. It's wrong. All in the name of fatherhood. 
this, all these destructions come in the name of fatherhood. I know a man of God, respectfully so, that one of his sons got tired and literally ran out of this country because the son pays for every flight ticket. Every what? Flight ticket. Including emergency flight tickets. The emotional son made up his mind one day that I will stand by you. I was sent to lift up um, your hands like like Aaron and her. And the man of God believed that testimony. And from that day, provide, even if you are bringing him for ministration and you are paying, he will tell the son, I'm on my way going. And the son will, it inconvenience them. Sincerely, it's a true story. Almost tore the marriage apart. Because when God blesses them, that, and you know, it's not like you are flying economy or, or, or all of this that you can even book early and book in advance with a low price. Tickets that no matter what time of the year you book is still expensive. Fatherhood. Fathers, in all honesty and respectfully so, have been some of the greatest abusers of church members. All in the name of fatherhood. And remember the idea is, don't talk against me. Don't talk to me. You dare do that, a cause will come. And truly it will come don't think it's just a joke. It will come. But the idea is threat. You don't threaten people into submission. You impact people. You pour your life to them. You become a representation of Jesus. And then as a result, they follow after you as you follow after Christ. That's God's concept of leadership. Next concept. The concept of wealth and success. This one is a big one in the body of Christ, especially in recent times. It looks like there is a very strong campaign against what we believe and know to be materialism. And I will never be um, one who proposes um, a lust-driven materialistic lifestyle. I come from a very conservative background. It's an advantage to me. And my persona, as a person, I'm... I'm quite conservative but the level of attack that has come on anybody called into the ministry of wealth and prosperity is, is becoming disturbing because it's, it's, it makes it look like the moment you capture in your theology a provision for God to bless you and bless people you are qualified for a harsh attack an attack under the covering of materialism. And it's not so. Some of the mo most materialistic people around the world don't have any money at all. And yet we have attacked people again and again. Snap a man of God with an expensive anything, anything, even Bible, and they attack the person immediately. Why will you buy this kind of Bible? What part of it is different from the English? You, are, you say all these kinds of things. And let me tell you the danger. The danger is that believers who should rise financially, now fear is making a lot of people to just retreat and say, well, I wanted to share the principles that will make people to rise while they serve God. But now that I'm being attacked, I'm not ready for this. Just serve God and go to heaven. No matter how you get there, God will fix up every remains of you that arrived there but for now I'm not I'm not going to be part of it it's terrible and then on the other side on the other hand again I'm telling you there are people sincerely let me tell you I've heard different gospels on wealth and success that is poisonous what did I call it poisonous dangerous is the kind of gospel that takes God out of your life lost lost after things do you know that let me tell you this sincerely you've you've seen this suicide happening all over now people dying around i believe that part of the reason may be the frustration that is coming based on the gospels that we have taught people because if i teach you for instance that your true worth is based on the jeep you have or the house you have and you are now 38 years old are we together now yes no husband 
no wife, no car, no child, no jeep, no house, you will hang yourself. We have to be careful because the communications that we are bringing in the body of Christ and sometimes even we men of God create a basis for competition. Oh, this is my son. You are a true son. You mean that car outside? You just brought it. Oh, amazing, amazing. This grace is working. And other sons are saying, so what are we now? That this thing is not working. I mean, the Bible never said the sons of Elijah stopped being his sons. Although one person received the mantle, they were still sons. So most believers now are under pressure. Look at the speed with which men of God are informed the moment any believer does anything. That is nice. Oh, come to my house. We tie a ribbon from one side of the building to the other and the man of God comes to cut the ribbon. And then the son becomes a deacon. And then the rest now that may be struggling around, they are under pressure. And the wives will usually say, my husband, are you really a man? What are you? You are not, I mean, you, you, every, what kind of a man are you that all doors are closed towards you? Prayer or no prayer doesn't make a difference in your destiny. And the man sits down and is on his way to taking drugs or killing himself. Look at young people who are depressed now. Once you cannot wear something expensive on your head as a lady, how much is this we've won? 700 naira. Ah, you are too beautiful um, um, for this kind of we've won. It's a dangerous indoctrination. This body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Uh-huh. So what? The, did God teach that just because the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, you, you run your life down? This is what has destroyed a lot of people. People have gone to buy cars they don't have the money to maintain. People have gone to buy houses and, and debt is yoking their neck to death. Because of a point that was trying, was, was trying to be proof. There are churches that don't have the capacity for expansion yet. They just got up, were taking over, and now open a branch in Zamfara, in Sokoto, in Maiduguri. They killed. Another concept, the concept of what we call glory realm and supernatural encounters. Listen very carefully. I'm a person of encounters, but listen carefully. There are all kinds. Do you know, let me tell you, something happened in Zaria. Those of you who were there, I, when this concept came into this city, those days, by God's grace and with all humility, we're privileged to be some of the people who were at the forefront of the move of the spirit when it had to do with encounters and supernatural manifestation of heavenly things. I remember those times we downloaded videos of Ruth Heflin and Joshua Mills and all of these people to show angels, visitations and all of that. But something strange happened. When that move started happening in Zaria and people started having gold doors, people started having this, that move did not reach two weeks and everything left. And the Lord told me that the reason why that thing left was because he, he did not want what he was doing in Zaria to be corrupted with supernatural experiences. People will sit down and pray for hours looking at their hands, waiting for their hands to shine as a result of gold dust. Everybody will hold everybody's leg, whether short or not, and say, sit down, that leg must grow. Have, did you see that concept? And just imagine in their minds that leg is coming out. The person was fine. When legs grow, don't you see it? This, listen, listen. And most of these things happen with charismatics. So the average man of God is looking for this something spooky. And your hand is wet and you say, wow, supernatural oil. Let me tell you, many of you know my experiences. I've had these supernatural experiences of oil, of all of these things. So I know what I'm saying. What of those who sit down and imagine angels? It can even be an attack. 
It can be a spirit being. Now, please listen to what I'm telling you. So people keep roaming around searching for visions and searching for experiences. They close their Bible for weeks and they, are, they just want the room, something wind. This is the wind of this. They quickly record it on a phone and say that I had an encounter and the devil says this is, this is an open door. And one day that person will get a visitation because you don't know what a spirit looks like. Angels don't have feathers. Read your Bible. No, feathers are not for angels. We pride in these experiences. I am a woman of God because I see visions every day. I am a man of God because I see visions. A believer who is walking based on the word now closes the Bible and says, I'm going on a three-day fasting. Lord, what is in this vision that I can't see? Are we together now? And you are fasting and praying and people begin to pray until they land in the hospital. With, with problems of bipolar. Talk to me. Am, am I, am, am, it's true. Doctors will tell you. How many times have we gone? I'm not, I'm not insulting the people. Don't get me wrong. But many of them continue to pray until they have encounters. Remember the gentleman that came from one of the cities, the Jesus guy and the Judas? Do you think that guy started like that? He started as a sincere servant of Christ, but with the obsession for encounters. People will get up in the night and they are looking for anything superstitious. The moment light, there are birds that come in front of my window every morning. They keep pecking on the window. I can, I can now, I can now snap those things. I mean, anybody who studied the biological sciences know what these birds are trying to do. Sometimes they sharpen their beak. I can now get up and keep recording these birds for one week and say I have divine messengers. How many, how many birds were messengers in the Bible? Birds brought raven. Yes, I agree. How many birds spoke in the Bible? They only brought food and leaf from Noah to confirm that the flood had finished. Many of you were doing well, believing the truth of scripture, until this era of visions just came and corrupted the purity of your experience. I'm not saying visions are wrong. We need encounters. Are we together? So because of this, many people now started studying Scientology. Are we together? And all kinds of new age movement. The, the ability to align your body and your consciousness to the forces of the universe in the seven regions of the earth. And before you know it, it starts working. Because you have touched something that is not of God. Two years down the line, you, you are seeing abilities working in you automatically that you know cannot be regulated. There are many people walking in power today. They are not devilish, but their appetite for power and the supernatural open them up to anything. Whether it is a shrine, whether it is a man of God, whether it is a prophet, just give me something that will shut the mouth of, of, of the people from my region. And you receive something because everyone that seeks... There are people who have studied transcendental meditation and yoga all in a bit to mix religions. They just want this out-of-body experience desperately. They want to come back with messages and they've had it. And many of them, you know that there are different pseudo-Christian sects that have all kinds of encounters. They can, they, they can program your body to have all kinds of astral travels. To the point now we are confused in the body. Because we have to balance this. It is alright when an insincere person encounters these graces. But what happens if these graces have been received by your friend?
Do you call your friend fake? Do you call your brother or your sister or your husband or your wife fake? One of the latest ones now in the body of Christ is prophetic chanting. Everybody is holding red, uh, 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 what they call it, phones. With all kinds, you don't sing, you just chant. Chanting didn't start today. And it is scriptural that there is a dimension of prophetic worship. But if you are not careful, very soon, one day, you will be hearing the tongues. And it will sound like Arabic. The communicator does not even know when he has delved into something See, look, let me tell you. Please hear me, believers. The apostolic and the prophetic were designed by God to create the coordinates, the boundaries of the growth of believers as they themselves align to Christ. Be careful. Listen to what I'm telling you. Be careful. Do you know that the concept of chanting started from our forefathers it was a trial anybody here that comes from regions where they do traditional festivals you will know that these are things that is it's a mystery in the spirit that was hijacked by dark powers and it's part of the things that because god is preparing the church for the move of god and so some of these ordinances have been restored but if they are not guided any move is usually corrupted when there is no balance. So people begin to delve into some of these things. I'm showing you issues that need to be addressed to stabilize the growth of the church. Very soon we will not have choruses again in church. As soon as we come, we say, praise the Lord, welcome to Koinonia. Mike will start playing some. Everybody will just start shouting like a madman. You find your own path and you are singing. I'm not being sarcastic. Until one day, someone will find out that the more you sing, the more your neighbor is getting mad. And you are wondering. Have you not seen people whose hands were laid on them? And the moment hands were laid on them, they started having demonic encounters. It is not because they are the, 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 those who laid hands are necessarily evil. They themselves have not vetted the source of the power. They are sincere people. Random laying on of hands. More grace. It says lay hands suddenly on no man. Because laying on of hands is a system of transfer. It's also a system of exchange. Are we together? Now there are different other concepts coming. There is no heaven again. So says the vision that other people are coming with. Or many people are saying the heaven other people saw. Now they are seeing other higher heavens. Oh, come on, please. You, you go online and see people who have had encounters and came back with spirits who are saying forget all that thing. Because let me tell you this, my brothers and my sisters. Satan wants everything God wants. And the moment Satan discerns a move of God, he will come. Certain Christian sects, have you read how they started? Was it not encounters? They had encounters with spirit beings. Who attempted to correct scripture. And that's how error came. A time will come. I pray it does not happen. Where you will be afraid to go to church. Because you are not sure. Of what that version of teaching. Will open you up to. Even these mysteries you see. These mysteries you see. If it's not guided. You will enter into mysticism. In the name of mysteries. Every mystery in the scripture is just a mystery to be revealed. It is the revelation of the mysteries that we are concerned about. Because the highest mystery in the New Testament is Christ. And the highest mystery is called the mystery of godliness. That's it. That Christ became a man. The mystery of his incarnation and his virgin birth. Are we together now? Yes. His suffering in the flesh. His ascension. His glorification. That is the highest mystery. 
Every other one is an auxiliary mystery that connects to it. So that you don't just say, there are many people who say, ah, they send me texts. Papa, thank you for this mystery. Tonight I have a night vigil and I want to share a mystery. I say, where, where is this one coming from now? And the terrible thing is if you don't balance this, anybody who fishes demon from anywhere and try to trace it to you. <laughs> Miracle alert has made many people lazy. They have not seen that is proof of God's mercy. And sometimes it comes to encourage the faith of people. There is a level of spiritual knowledge if you have been given, you would never have miracle alert. God will say you are joking. This is too much laziness for the level of revelation you have. Go and get a job. Go and, and give value. To whom much is given, talk to me. Much is required. Notice the people that have miracle alerts most times. There are people that God is encouraging. You are wondering why it didn't happen to you. I'm giving you the answer now. Because God is saying, I am not. Yes. Yes, sir. You can have it. But let listen to me. If I sit down now and I say, Lord, why will, where will you give me miracle alert? God will say, Habba. God speaking, Habba. My son. To whom much is given. Don't, don't, don't embarrass the investments of God on your life. There are some things that were meant to encourage believers. You have been taught value. You have been taught diligence. Are we together now? You cannot expect God to just continue to do all of No. Are you listening to what I'm teaching you? Come up hither. Is a call to know where to stand on these matters among many that you must know where to stand that you be unshakable you'll be immovable please listen to me that when you say I am a man of faith you know what you are saying I will never in my life with what I know today place value on anything in my life outside of Christ my true worth is the blood of Jesus my true worth is not pounds and dollars and cars please listen to me you will never find me depressed not over money not over house I will excel God will bring the houses he will bring the cars but never will it be that these things become the basis of my confidence. A newer car or a better car will not suddenly make me know that, ah, God, you are faithful. He's faithful. The apex of his faithfulness has been demonstrated already in what Christ did. Is God speaking to someone now? This must be the basis of your confidence. This is, this is, a, this is a vaccination against depression. Apostle, look at my life. Guess how old you think I am? Can you believe that I'm 41? Nothing is happening in my life. And you leave God. I know that God wants to bless you. But if you leave God because nothing is happening, you were not taught well. Leaving God because things are not going well in your life, my brothers and my sisters, is proof of weakness. It's not strength. What shall separate us from the love of God? That you get to a point where you stand. It is not what happens or what does not happen that governs your faith. Apostle, I'm coming for miracle service next week. I'm trusting God for a child. I agree. God will give you a child. But that you can look at God and say, Lord, if in my lifetime I don't have a child, you are still Lord. You are still King. I will serve you with the zeal of a woman with nine children. A lot is going on in the body of Christ that is a reflection of the poor teachings and mentorship. Lord, how can you do this to me? How can you do this to me? No. I'm going to make an example with someone now that will shock you. Madam, please stand. 
you this one looking at me yes please stand where are you coming from this woman let me tell you a little story this woman you see follows me almost everywhere I go to minister she's had a child with a condition and she's been trusting God for the healing of that child I apologize if I embarrass you I hope I didn't look at this I'm just trying to encourage people up until the time I went to Eboi, this woman you see followed me with her child I observed this woman as she prayed and cried and shouted before God and I knew that it was not just for the child from Enugu she's here again to come and receive the word and to go please listen to me I want you to listen to my message knowing God experientially go and get that message and listen to it there is something about our concept of Christianity that we must balance if we do not balance this we will be in big trouble a man's life does not constitute in the abundance of things brothers and sisters we are people who are prosperous by the grace of God God has been merciful to us as individuals and as a ministry we will never look down on the role of the blessings of God but far be it from me that wealth and all of this will rise above Christ with or without them I tell you the truth Christ remains Lord this is what you should learn all this this backsliding talk God didn't do this I, 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 no it is it is proof that you are not grounded if I come here and I find only 10 people in koinonia I will go back concerned and I'll say Lord what is wrong but to say okay Lord I quit ministry I will just go and write books and do seminars no sir I'm a ministry for life this thing we have come it's not it's not an ambition to use and make money it is not because we didn't have options it's a call by revelation we have pledged our life and our blood so when people love God and don't get money and then they are depressed and just sign out of ministry say me I've retired oh what are you doing I want to start a block industry did you have to leave ministry to start the block industry no but somebody taught you that you have to choose either of them please listen to what I'm telling you and you will be sound and you will be balanced a precious precious man of God that I love very much just known him for not too long um, it's possible that he's even following now um, he lost his precious loved one and I remember us just conversing through the night and he was just crying and saying apostle I cannot believe this this precious woman I love with all my heart has gone to be with the Lord and I told him listen to me I'm a man of God I'm a miracle worker by God's grace I have seen all kinds of miracles in my life and in this ministry but one thing I can tell you is that every time we do not understand God we tell him Lord you are greater I played for him a song from my phone Don Moen song and encourage him I said just keep quiet and listen to it as I play this for you and when he finished I told him I'm standing by you and all of that a foolish man of God said, no no let's forget this let's let's go to that mortuary I've been to the mortuary before I've told you this thing it doesn't mean I'm not a man of faith please listen to me I'm teaching you the ways of God it's the foolishness that is destroying young ministers they will call police for you one day if you don't learn the ways of God there are times that you may not have answers as a man of God don't be embarrassed it reminds people again that you are not God and it reminds you too The pride to always have answers to the issues of men will kill you as a preacher if you don't learn. It is okay to not have answers and recommend them to God who created you, the man of God. I told you I used to feel sad 
when I prayed for people and they were not healed, especially for barren women, it disturbed me for a very long time. Lord, why would you bring this kind of people to this ministry when there's this kind of problem? Let me ask you a question. What is the condition that must happen in your life today for you to leave God? Think about what I said very carefully. Don't assume you have the answer. If I want you to leave God today, what must I do to you? At what point will you leave God and say, I've had enough? When you don't have a husband, when you don't have a wife, when you don't have school fees for your children, or when you don't feel like you are growing spiritually, at what point in your life when your business fails, when your property is repossessed, I give you sound doctrine that will preserve your Christian experience that in the maze of debates that continue to fly around the body of Christ, you don't join to scar people, but you stand immovable. I know whom I have believed. Megirma 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 Sing it one more time. Make it my, 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 If, if there's any really elderly person, don't bully anybody, but if there's any elderly person, please, they can sit some of this, this space here. Some of the worship team people can stand up. The gentlemen can stand up. Stand up and stay by the wall. Let our mothers sit down. If they are mothers or fathers, if you are, if you are an adult, but you are still young, please stand. It doesn't mean that just because... We know what elderly is. If you don't look like one of these are mothers, please stand. If you don't look like one of these are fathers, stand. But just to make sure that uh, we help them. If there's a pregnant woman, let her sit. Our pregnant ladies are... No, no, no. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. If you are pregnant and there is a reason... Why you cannot stand, just wave your hand. Somebody will help you. Why am I doing these things? So that you will learn. And then you will know that these things were not acting. Are we together? We are not doing it to demean the younger people. But we are doing it to show you the excellency of the practice of the law of honor. Are we good? Can I continue? We'll find somewhere. You know, I'm so excited. It just reminds me of how this thing all started. Those days, those days, there was no suit, no nice cloth. Don't let all these things deceive you. We would wear just anything was fine. We didn't have the, the rigor of looking for any adornment that would cause pain in your wardrobe, you just picked your Bible and off you went. And we prayed without wondering who was fine, who was not fine. We knew no man after the flesh. It was Jesus and fire. That was all that was our concern. Praise the Lord. Imagine that you tried to pray to stop this rain and it didn't stop. 
Because the Bible says we have power over everything. Is that true? So imagine my precious people who were outside that you lifted your voice and you said, Rain, I stand as a child of God, as a believer, and I stop you and the rain stopped. Or the rain did not stop. And then you are suddenly embarrassed and discouraged. And you say, Lord, this thing does not work. No. Listen, I'm not teaching you to be faithless. But I'm teaching you that when things do not work, do not be embarrassed. He is still Lord. He is still Lord whether results happen or results do not happen. Okay? Right, so let's talk about greatness for a few minutes and then we'll spend time praying. If this rain does not stop this night, you can be sure that we are going to pray until you come up here that this night. <laughs> what, what I've been looking for, I finally found. You'll be free to remove your shoes and pray till you come up here. That. The visions you've been wanting to see, you will see it this night. You will pray until the visions come. Greatness, please look up. In this kingdom, God is not against your being prosperous and your being influential. Let me balance that very quickly. I've heard men of God say all sorts of things. If you're standing and you can't write, don't worry. You can always get the message. I know you are wet and your writing materials may be wet. Don't worry. I've heard preachers say that God's idea is not for you to be the most blessed person. God's idea is not for you to be this and that in a bid to create balance to materialism. That teaching in itself is error. God is not against your being great. Please listen. God is not a God of mediocrity. Heaven is not a place of mediocrity. Are we together? And everywhere the value system of the kingdom has been re received, there is excellence, there is leadership, there is influence. So it is all right to aspire to be great. Please listen. It is all right to aspire to be wealthy. It is all right to aspire to rise to the pinnacle, the zenith of your pursuit. But the problem here is when your relevance and your self-worth is tied to those things. Are you getting what I'm teaching here? That when you say, I am a failure until Naira and Cobble in my pocket proves otherwise, there is a big problem there. I am a failure until a husband or a wife comes into my life. I am a failure until my womb can give birth to a child. No. No. That's where I have a problem. A man's life, the Bible says, does not consist in the abundance of the things that he has. That means it is possible, quite honestly, to have nothing in this life. And if you have Jesus Christ, it is called the riches. Give us Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 8. The Bible calls it the riches of Christ. The unsearchable riches. Unto me, who am less than the least of the saints, is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles. What? The unsearchable riches. That means if you have Christ, you are great. You have Christ, you are wealthy. Honestly speaking, you may not be able to do much in this life because the human beings that work in this system will not regard what you call valuable as real value. But I can tell you one thing, that have everything in this life minus Christ, you are not great. True greatness is not measured in silver and gold and pounds and dollars and houses and cars. True wealth is measured in the abundance of your knowledge of Christ. If you're with me, please say amen. amen. You have captured my heart, consumed my heart with your love. You have captured my heart, 
consumed my heart with your love. Very powerful song. Sing it one more time. Yeah, you have captured my heart, consumed my heart with your love. And if all I say is Jesus, Jesus, that's more than enough. Money minus Jesus is poverty. Education minus Jesus is illiteracy. Influence minus Jesus is mediocrity. Jesus is the one who gives value to everything in your life. Redefine your concept of greatness, my brothers and my sisters. To know that anything you have in this life, please listen, minus Jesus, you do not have anything. That means the one thing in your life that gives value to everything must be protected at all cost. Are we together now? Yes. We have garages for our cars. We have stores for our food. But many times we do not have a place for God in our homes and our hearts. We have little safes maybe in our houses where we keep the little money that we have. We have bank accounts. We have ATM cards that we protect so jealously. The moment your ATM falls, by the next day you're on your way to the bank to get another one. But where is his place in your heart? Listen very carefully. And sometimes we men of God have brought a wrong concept. When you stand to see Joshua Selman dress, ah, this is wonderful. That may be wonderful, but all this is nonsense without Jesus. I repeat, nonsense without Jesus. The true value of a man, my brothers and my sisters, is not the jeep that is packed. When you know this, no man will intimidate you who does not have Jesus. You don't stand and a millionaire comes without Jesus. And just because he's driving a very pricey car and traveling in a private jet, you stand with your Jesus and look stupid. Not after today. I know that I will increase. I know that I will strive to be the best. But with or without prosperity, I am still wealthy and I am still great. This is very powerful. It's a revelation that God gave me early in life. I have never felt more useful, more important because of the things around me. I tell you sincerely, the way I felt before I had a car and the way I feel now, in all fairness, is not really different. The only difference is that it's afforded me more convenience. But to feel more important with a car key or without a car key, it will never happen to me. Whether a car or no car, I know that I'm valuable. Jesus has made me so. Are you getting what I'm saying? Whether you pass jam or you don't pass jam, passing jam is just a system of getting you to navigate the path of success on earth. Whether you pass jam or not, you are still valuable. Whether you go abroad or not, you are still valuable. Please listen to me. As a graduate, whether you have a job or not, I'm showing you the antidote to depression and suicide and all of these things. Come, Sam. Come, Pastor Alpha. Come, Pastor Femi. Now, look at this gentleman looking all sharp. And then imagine with me, for instance, that you stand among them and you feel I'm not rich, I am not this. This is what the devil will tell you. Remember that Satan is the master of the sense realm. Everybody say the sense realm. That means you will use what you see, what you hear, to tell you things about your life that God did not say. So he will tell you, you cannot belong here. Why? Because you don't have this suit. You don't have this kind of shoe, this kind of that. And then... You back out 
this guy is not born again. This guy is not born again. This guy is an idol worshiper. But just because they have physical things, you reduce Jesus to become nothing. And you will give up Jesus a thousand times to become like this man. I will never envy any unbeliever in my life. I will be inspired by their achievements, but not to the detriment of the riches of Christ in my heart. Is God speaking to us? Men of God, learn this. It is not when you begin to wear golden rings and golden chains and you have a convoy of people driving you. That's not when you become successful as a man of God. Please hear me. It is not when you have protocol standing at your back and call. You now say ministry is doing well. That's a devilish indoctrination. Be excellent, but not at the detriment of your spiritual sanity. Something more than gold. I've got something more than gold. Something more than gold. I've got something more. What's the other part? I've got something more than gold. I'm telling to the world. Jesus is more than One more time. Something more than gold. I've got something more than gold. When you understand this song, you will go back to your one room. Now that it's raining, maybe rain is falling on your bed now. And you sit down and suddenly you are wondering, but if I really knew God, wouldn't I be rich? Wealth has nothing to do with the knowledge of God. Wealth has to do with the application of the principles of value and productivity. Don't reduce the wealth of your Christian experience and insult the wealth of Christ in you. You check your CGPA and you see a third class and you just say, I'm finished. Ah! This life is over. No job. No nothing. Ah! I tell it to the world. Jesus is more than gold. I tell it to myself. Jesus, Jesus is more than gold. I tell it to the world. Jesus, Jesus you're is more, more than, than gold. gold. Tell it to the world. Jesus is more than gold. Somebody met me years ago and said there's a trend of suits, apostle. That at your level you should start wearing. I said, why? He said, because that's what is raining. I said, I don't know who they are, but let me tell you this. I dress well, but I will never be under pressure. Never be under pressure. I will be as decent and excellent as I can be, but I reject any pressure upon my head to mismanage my finances because I'm trying to prove to people that Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive with or without miracles. Did you hear what I said? My prosperity is not the reason Jesus is alive. Anybody waiting for me to be rich, to believe in Jesus, will soon go to hell. Because wealth is not the seed for salvation. The convicting power of the Spirit is. Please be careful so that you don't get under pressure to say, I want people to see my results so that they will be born again. It is true that your results affect them. But if their heart is made up to be hardened, there is nothing they will see in your life that will take them to Jesus. People saw the miracles Jesus performed. Yet when he resurrected, some doubted. It takes the spirit to convict men. It is the goodness of God that brings men to repentance. I'm drumming it today 
that in coming up hither, your greatest value is Christ. Not a Benz, not a Navigator, not a Rolls Royce. Thank God for these things. But they are simply metals without Christ. Are we together? Thank God for your beauty. If that is the highest perception of value in your life, then it's unfortunate. Christ in us. Talk to me, believers. Christ in us. Christ in me. Not certificate with me. Not a good shoe with me. Not just PhD with me. I don't demean these things. We are blessed people and successful people in this ministry. But I tell you, I count all things but dung for the excellency of Christ. God forbid, but if my house is to catch fire now, and I stand before God to tell you, if my house is to catch fire, and they tell me, Apostle, you have one minute to carry the most valuable things in your house before it gets burned to ashes. The first thing I'm going to carry, I won't carry a Bible. You think I'll carry a Bible, I can buy another one. I won't carry a Bible. I will carry my notes. The truths that God gave me. Are we together? I will carry my notes. Number two, I will carry my phone. My phone is important. And my laptop, my, my gadgets. I will carry them. Number two, or number three, I will carry, I think I will carry my card that has my ATM and all these things. <laughs> and it's not because of loss or fear. It's out of responsibility. If I'm not able to carry it, I will not feel bad. Once I carry these books, and I can carry my phone. My contacts mean a lot to me. Any other thing in my house can burn to ashes. The cars can burn to ashes from where they came from. How do you respond when things leave you? It tells me to the degree to which Jesus is enthroned in your life. You lost 10,000 naira till today you are still depressed. You lost it last year. You still believe you will find it. It's carnality. My brothers and my sisters, it is lost. Are we together? Jesus. The greatest asset this man has that stands before you is not a flourishing ministry. It's not bank accounts with money. It is not properties and assets. I stand before the God of heaven and I tell you, the most valuable thing in my life is not outside me. I don't trust anything outside me. They can come and they can go. Is God doing something in your mind today? This grip on things as the proof of success. No. Don't be carried away by material things. The real value of a believer is the wealth of Jesus. The real value of a believer is the wealth of Jesus. Please hear me. The real value of the believer is the riches of Christ. I need to drum this again and again. So don't act whatever leaves you Check whether Jesus Christ left too. If he's still there, relax. You are still blessed. You are still great. You are still wealthy. Even when death comes to take your life, if Jesus goes with you, you did not lose. That's why Paul said to die is gain. Provided he left with you. Vanity upon vanity. All is vanity. Certificate without Jesus Christ is vanity. It may not look like it because of the job it can give you. But keep growing old. 
you will soon find out that everything minus Jesus is vanity. Marriage minus Jesus is vanity. It doesn't look like it because of the children that come. It doesn't look like it because of the status that it gives you. Ah. You are everything. Everything is you. You are everything. Everything is you. One more time. You are everything. You are everything. Everything is you. Everything is you. That's a true believer. Alpha, Omega of my life. I cannot define my worth by what phone I'm using. Hear me, believers. There are some of you now, your prayer request that you've written for next week is a phone. Oh God, give me a phone of 200,000. What's the most expensive phone? What's the class of phones? A what? iPhone. So you have an iPhone and you move around with it, expecting respect, demanding respect. I have an iPhone. No, that's not somebody who knows Christ. My shoe is 250,000. That shoe cannot raise the dead. That shoe cannot give life to any other person. I'm not teaching you to be mediocre. I'm teaching you to be blessed but with understanding that everything around your life minus Jesus is useless. Our fathers used to say, take the world and give me Jesus. We hate what they said, but the idea was that nothing compares to him. But right now, our loss-driven generation says, give me Jesus and give me other things. This is what we mean. I don't want to lose anyone. Why will I ever compare Jesus Christ with prosperity? Why will I ever compare Jesus Christ with greatness and appointment? Why will I ever compare Jesus Christ to a flourishing ministry? I am not great because I lead a great ministry. No. I'm not great because of the results that happen in this ministry. Please don't get it wrong. You are not great the day you enter your own house. Hmm. You are not great the day you buy the car you want. You are not great the day you see nine zeros or six, seven, eight, nine zeros behind the figures in your bank account. The wealth of my relationship with Jesus is something that nothing in this life has the capacity to take. I'm teaching you and I'm giving you a new idea. The carnality in this our world and our generation will destroy us if we don't restore Jesus back to his place and will depress a lot of young people. The next time someone sees you and says, with all this, you're going to church. Look at you. You can't even afford food of 1,000. You tell him, no problem. I am learning the principles. I am coming. But let me tell you for your information, it is not these things that define my value. My value has been defined. The day Jesus said it is finished on that cross, let me tell you sincerely, he stamped my value. God gave Jesus Christ as a receipt to collect me. When you carry 100 naira to buy Zobo, which one do you love more? The Zobo more than the money. So the father carried Jesus and gave him to take you back. And some, some person with, with 500,000 wants to look down on the power of Jesus in your life. I refuse to be defined by what is around me or not around me. I need the things around me that makes for a successful life. Why? Because they add up all together and help my efficiency as far as my living on earth is concerned and then my promoting the interest of God. But never will it be the basis of my confidence. Some may trust in horses. 
Some may trust in chariots. Believers, talk to me. But we will trust in the name of our God. He says, vain is the help of man. Never put your confidence in the abundance of the things that surround you. Anything that is truly great, I put it inside me. If it cannot enter inside me, it's not great enough. My bank account cannot enter inside me. Huh. No. The closest thing to Jesus and the, the Holy Spirit in my life is my intellectual property. At least it entered my brain. It didn't reach my heart, but it entered somewhere. That means I value my intellectual property even more than money. Please have priority for your life. Don't go back home worshipping clothes, worshipping houses, worshipping cars. It's idolatry. Worshipping talent. The riches of Christ. This thing has given me rest. Way before God started giving me cars and vehicles. And not because I didn't have the capacity to get them. God prohibited me from getting all these material things for a long time. And I wondered why. Until the Spirit of God revealed it to me. He said, I want you to be a correct model to the young man. That their sense of worth is not in the things around them. Miracle service will be here with crowds outside. I would dress with a suit that can buy a bike that is carrying me. And the bike man will come and drop me. I would drop from the bike with my Bible. And enter with joy. I'll never forget one time that the protocol collected the car of someone to come and pick me. I rebuked them. I said, never collect any member's car to come and preach, to come and carry me. Coming for koinonia with a car does not add or remove the anointing on my head. When I was fasting, the car was not there. So today that God has brought some of this tea and bread, I will be stupid to believe that because of this tea and bread, I am greater. No, sir. My greatness is sub. In fact, if ever I am greater, it is because of lives that are transformed, not things acquired. Do not measure greatness in this kingdom just by things acquired. Things acquired should be the last of the indices to measure greatness. It is the wealth of Christ. Then number two, the opportunity to provide transformation in lives. If Pastor Alpha was a drunkard, and through my life and ministry, he has become a man of God, for instance. This is true impact. This is greatness. Next time someone tells you, I am great, tell him, show me who you changed. If you cannot show me a life, not just somebody you fed, who came to know the Lord through your life? You are poor unless your money brings someone to Jesus. You are ignorant except your education provides a platform for someone to know the Lord. John chapter 1 from verse 5 and 6 and then to 7, remember what the Bible says. There was a man sent from God, he says. His name was John. He says, the same came for a witness, to bear witness to the truth that through him, his witness, all men might believe. The real value of anything in your life is how it contributes to glorifying the name of Jesus and then advancing the cause or, or, or making for the betterment of people's lives. There are many millionaires who are not great. There are many educated people who are not great. There are many pastors with crowds who are not great. There are many miracle workers who are not great. It is the measure of Christ in you and the measure of the impact that your life can provide. He is everything. He is everything. Everything is you. Everything is you. You are everything. You are everything. Everything is you. Everything One more time. You. you are everything. Everything is you. Everything is you. So.
so I can take my gold and lay it before him. My silver laid before him. My achievements laid before him and say, Jesus, you are above them all. That when men clap for me because of things, I remind them that none of these things can take his place. The supernatural. A generation that does not believe the supernatural is the generation that will truly miss God experientially. Hi. We need to trust God for grace. This is one of the benefits of things like praying in the spirit to take you out of this mundane realm of carnality where we always we believe that things must happen by science alone. No, sir. There is a God in heaven. By this time tomorrow, there is a God in heaven. The rod of Aaron that did not have a root to the earth can still bring forth fruit. It is true. This has been my contemplation, so not just today. It's been in my heart. You can, you can see the passion with which I'm communicating. A generation is losing the essence of the reality of the power of God. The ministry of the anointing is gradually being lost. And when I say the ministry of the anointing, I'm not talking of flying up and down, falling down. The ability to demonstrate the existence of God who sits in the heaven. This has nothing to do with being an apostle or a prophet. It's how far God can reach to men. For I spoke a word. Yes. You have been so, so good to me. I don't know the song, but I like the song. Supernatural is a demonstration of God's love. He knows that you already got born again at 40. When will you know God to become great? Already you are late. You are late already. So the dimension of his supernatural can bring mercy, can bring favor, jump, and accelerate your life and push you forward. Otherwise, why is he God? Please believe what I'm saying. God knows that he called you into ministry and he knows the people he's sending you to. He knows the stubbornness in their heart that until they see miraculous signs, they won't come. So he, listen, he's not going to send you just with a sermon. No. How then will you demonstrate and defend what he sent you? Moses said, what will, who will I tell Pharaoh sent me? power of God. Let us be a generation that can believe the power of God. That when God says I can lift you, you believe it. When God says I can anoint you, you believe it. When God says I can turn your life around, you believe it. Please hear me. What more do you need to see to know that natural things don't count very much in this realm? You have to be outstanding by an agency that is not human. John 4, 48. Except ye see miraculous signs, you will not believe. Jesus himself said it. Except you see it, 
there is a demonstration of the hand and the might of God that must rest upon us and rest upon our generation. Why will you write your prayer request if it will not be answered? Why should you travel? I'm aware that some of us have been here, right? A number of people that I ministered to in Abuja followed me here. There are people who have come from all over. There's a pastor, you're the one who came from Ukraine? From Ukraine, all the way. For heaven's sake, why will you come and watch a man? Am I a, a comedian? This is not an amusement park. Oh, there is a God that sits in heaven. Please hear me. There is a God that sits in heaven that can speak, that can lift, that can turn a man's life around. Shake that unbelief. Shake that unbelief. Get it out of your life and believe that God is able to turn a man's life around. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, He changes me down, I still love Him, lives and I love I could earn it, I don't deserve it, still you give yourself away. Let me tell you, one of the major things that I know God is going to be doing tonight is healing the sick. There are mysterious diseases that are coming and latching upon people. You see people dying for diseases and sicknesses with no name. It's, it's like headache, but it's not headache. It's like chest pain, but it's not chest pain. It's like asthma but it's not asthma. It's like a lump, but it's not a lump. It's like a growth, but it's not a growth. Whatever it is, we know it's an oppression of the devil. Please sit down. Let me finish up and then we'll pray. So by the ministry of the anointing, number two, how blessings manifest. The second dimension is by the impartation of wisdom and understanding. The second way that the word becomes flesh is that the Lord by his spirit will impart upon a man the spirit of wisdom and understanding. There are certain results that don't need the supernatural as it were. They just need an awareness of the laws of God and the fortitude to walk in accordance with those principles. There are dimensions that doesn't just need an event. The power of God is coming on two people outside. Two people outside. Please bring them here. Two people outside. I started sensing a very mighty grace. Ah, tonight will be a great night of impartation. Please bring them here. Just listen to the word. The Lord will do a quick work. Two people. I see like rain. The rain of the spirit is about to be drenched. For I spoke a word Ali Please bring them. The Lord is saying, I'm shifting you, both of you, that you are entering a dimension of the favor of God. This is what I'm seeing. You came here to contact the grace that will bring you into a strange realm of favor. And I declare by the spirit of grace that everything that is not of the Christ 
over your lives and destinies. This is miracle service. It must bow to the name and the Lordship of Jesus. No shadow you will light up. Mountain you will climb up. Coming out to me. three and then we'll pray the third way that the word becomes flesh that possibilities get to you is through the ministry of men 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 Men are God's conduits. They communicate possibilities. Most of the favor that you need is already in the hands of a man. You need the ministry of men. I don't just mean the prophetic ministry of men. You need the giving ministry of men. You need the lifting ministry of men. You need the endorsing ministry of men. Please tonight, let your expectations be high. God will not disappoint you. The word becomes flesh. The word becomes a testimony. When the anointing of the Holy Spirit comes upon that situation, the word becomes a testimony. When you are given spiritual illumination, wisdom, understanding, the fortitude to comprehend spiritual things, then the word becomes flesh. When men are introduced in your life, men are carriers of possibilities, not just spiritual possibilities. There are men that have the wealth to give you. There are men that have the endorsement, the leverage, their credibility is an asset. They can bring it upon your life and turn your life Everything that we seek for in this place tonight comes under these three categories. There are matters that only the anointing can solve tonight. There are matters that the quickening of the spirit, providing illumination, will channel you to solve. But there are things that men, 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 given by God. Listen, when the man at Get Beautiful met Peter and John, he didn't say, such as in, is in heaven. He said, such as I have. There are things men have. Please hear me. There are things that men have. And they can give it. There are things that men have. And they can give it. A man can have a car and give you the key to the car. A man can have. But you see, the things that men have, real blessings are not physical. When a man gives you anything physical, it's not really a blessing. It's just a donation. Real blessings are spiritual. All the sons of Abraham, he gave them physical gifts. But to Isaac, he gave him the blessing. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, we are going to do a quick walk tonight. But I trust God to heal the sick. This, 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 there is a grace today to, to damage all kinds of infirmity. Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth 
with the Holy Ghost and with power. And the Bible says he went about doing good and healing all, healing all, they that were oppressed of the devil. Tonight, you will lift up that report, that threat that stands before the God of heaven. There are many of us here, I believe, who are in ministry. We may not exactly have needs. Tonight is also a night of impartation. Listen, an impartation is a transference of spiritual possibilities. It can be transferred. You can carry something back that you did not come with. You can carry a grace that while you were in the car coming, it was not yet in your life. And your results will show what has been introduced in your life. Are we together? Please rise up, lift up your voice in one minute and declare, Lord, I believe. I believe. I'm a believer tonight. Everywhere, outside, inside, pray. The rewarder, the healer, the lifter. I want to pray. Please listen. Listen. Please don't get used to the ritual of what is done here. It is not just a ritual to pray, have people fall under the anointing. Be sensitive to what God is doing everywhere. But be sensitive to what he is doing in you, around you. Be sensitive to the graces you are receiving. Be sensitive to the prophecy that is coming upon you. Be sensitive to the things that are changing. Be sensitive to the mantles that are resting upon you. Be sensitive to what is happening. Be sensitive to the speakings of the Spirit. So I, I don't want you to get used to the, the, the ritual. Oh, you are about to see people in front. No, 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 no. Let your heart be open. There is a God in heaven and he's the lifter of men. Please hear me. You are a visitor here coming. You are welcome. We'll acknowledge you later on. But please, insist that you did not waste your time to come for nothing. Please, I know you have heard and I know you came for an experience. Many of us have inconvenienced ourselves not under the best of conditions to be here. Please don't waste your stay. Let your heart be open to carry something tangible. Hallelujah. Satan is behind many predicaments of our lives. Satan is behind many of the ills that continue to happen. Please let me have your attention because I want to pray now. And the power of God, listen please. As I begin to pray, there are people here. You see, God may not necessarily, don't worry, it's okay. Excuse me, that's all right. Leave the seats, please. There are people here who are sincere people, even believers. But your life and destiny is under the strange influence of the operation of darkness. The Bible says many things happen in Mount Zion. And one of it is that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Please, I like you to believe. This is no ordinary prayer. Remember, it is the Spirit and the Bride that is talking. You are only seeing the Bride, but it's the Spirit and the Bride. I'm about to pray, and I want you to please believe. Because everything that does not represent Christ must go today, now. A 
few weeks ago, I had an encounter and the Holy Spirit told me you are about to experience a new lifting in your authority in the spirit. Listen, please. This is the first time I'll be sharing it. And I saw, every time I see it, this is what I see. I see like a badge in the spirit, a promotion. And that the Lord said, I will put power upon your lips in another dimension that as you declare, you will see it happen. It's, this thing is a grace. It's a grace. It is not every time a man declares with power. There are times that you declare with authority. It's an office. Let me pray. Thank you, Jesus. There is a very serious deliverance that is about to happen. And please, I want you to bring the people in front. I'm seeing yokes. I'm telling you, I'm seeing real bondages. God has anointed this place to be a place of liberty. Right now, I declare by the Spirit of the Christ. And I decree and declare that in the name of Jesus, at the count of three, I want you to shout that name that is above every other name. And except God is not God, any planting that is not of the Christ over your life and your destiny, I speak by the grace of God Almighty that He must let you go. Now, one, two, three, shout Jesus. Bring them out. Bring them out. In the name of Jesus, I command devils, I command spirits, yokes that have tied down the destinies of men. Be gone now by the spirit of the Christ. The Bible says now the Lord is that spirit. Go now. Release every destiny. 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 I decree and declare. The Bible says even the captives, the lawful captives shall be delivered. Therefore I declare that every legal access upon which the devil is holding on to anyone's destiny right now by the fire of the Holy Ghost be delivered now. 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 I command closed doors be open. Closed doors be open. Right now be open. Closed by the hand of darkness. I declare be open. Be open now. Be open now. Be open now. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Yahweh. Hey. is showing me chains over people's heads. I decree and declare, anyone here under any kind of yoke, at the count of three, inside, outside, online, I want you to shout that name again. It's not a ritual done out of unbelief. There is force and power in the name. One, two, three. 
every orchestration. Go now. Be loose now. Be loose now. In the name of Jesus, be loose. By the authority of Jesus. By the authority of Jesus. By the authority of Jesus. The Lord is showing me people who have been at the same level for many years. There is nothing you do in time that moves you forward. In the name of Jesus, I'm seeing fire just rising from my limbs. I'm about to pray that prayer. Anyone who has been kept at the same position right now by the anointing of the Spirit, I declare that limitation broken now. Broken now. Help them. Broken now. Broken now. Broken now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Right away, I want to pray against barrenness. I'm sensing the grace. Don't wait till you are married. If there is anyone here by the Spirit of God, by whatever means, your womb has been closed by the authority of heaven. I declare right now, I'm seeing the anointing coming on a number of people, married or unmarried. Let that womb be open now. Be open now. Be open now. I tell you, the anointing of God is coming on people. Whether you are married or not, some of you are standing in for your loved ones. I declare again, womb, be open now. Be open now. Be open now. Be open now. I command every devil. Ah, I'm seeing such. I'm still seeing people's feet tied like a chain around the feet of people. Right now, I decree and declare every chain, Makatoska Barakata, holding anyone now. In the name of Jesus, I break those chains now. 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 Hallelujah. If you have any abdominal pain, lay your hands right now. Lay your hands just on your stomach. Any kind of abdominal pain. Doesn't matter whether it's a fibroid, doesn't matter whatever. Just lay your hands here right now. In the name that is above all names, I decree and declare. Right now, the anointing of the Holy Ghost is coming upon your stomach area. And in the name of Jesus, let there be a miracle right now. Let there be a miracle right now. I'm seeing a number in the realm of the Spirit 21. And the Lord is saying an anointing is coming on those people. And that grace is for direction. You are at a point in your life where you are confused. You honestly don't know what to do. But right now I stretch my hands. 21. I see it in the realm of the spirit. Right now let the anointing of the spirit bring in direction. Ending confusion. Receive that grace right now. Receive that grace right now. Receive that grace right now. Direction. Direction. Direction in ministry, direction in business, direction, geographic direction. Receive it in the name of Jesus. I want to pray for speed. I'm going to continue praying for speed until I see it manifest. Now please hear me. Because of what happens when I pray for speed, the ushers are limited. Make sure that you protect anyone because people will start running up and down. That grace for speed must find expression 
I will continue to pray it until you leave your current level. I stretch my hands by the privilege of God's grace and I declare, I don't know what has caused delay, but the mantle that commands speed right now at the count of three. Koinonia, hear me. One, two, three. Receive speed. 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 In your destiny. Speed. Do in one month what one year could not do. Do in one month what five years could not do. Do in one month in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We're trying to conserve time. There is a lot to do. Who is Janet? I'm hearing a name, Janet. 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 All those who are in front under the anointing here, I command the devils that have oppressed you. This is the house of God. Right now at the count of three, release them. Release everything you have tied down. One two three go go now every strange spirit go now go now now the lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty janet i'm hearing a name janet hold on please don't don't be rowdy just relax stand up my dear that lady on green stand up where are you coming from Huh? You are from Kaduna State. Relax, calm down. I want to pray for you. Listen, God is not just calling names at random. I want to pray for you. You can expect that there will be so many genets. The power of God is coming on one of you right now. One of you, as I'm, I'm seeing an anointing coming on one of you right now. It's, it's not something you can stand. The power of God. We are going to have to do a quick work because we want to take out time and minister to the sick. In the name that is above all names, I decree and declare. There's one of you, the anointing of the Spirit. Let's just walk that instruction first. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare on all of you. I may not have time to prophesy one by one. But every barrier that stands between you and the next level... I declare, let it go now. I curse it by the Spirit of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. The power of God is coming on a lady. Just where this, my brothers, are standing. Bring that person. Just this row. I'm seeing a cloud. Just right here. Right now as I'm speaking. The anointing of the Spirit is coming on one person there. Please bring the person. Is a lady, bring her. Janet, I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hi. This is an instruction God is giving me. There is a family, I'm seeing the family. It's a whole pattern. Nobody marries. No matter what happens. I'm about to pray. The power of God is coming on that one person for the sake of the family. Please, I want you to believe and receive. I declare that marital delay. This is the instruction God is giving me. Break now. Break now. Break now. Break now. The Lord is opening my eyes. And in the realm of the spirit, I'm seeing the map of Benway State. An anointing is coming right now on Benway. God is bringing a miracle. I release my, I stretch my hands and I declare a miracle right now. It's a sign and a wonder how God does it. Benway State. Benway State. Benway State. I cause the workings of darkness over that territory. In the name of Jesus.
Maketo laka prakatos. Be free in the name of Jesus. The Lord is taking me to a neighboring state. I'm literally seeing myself in Kogi state. And the Lord is saying he's breaking witchcraft. I don't know who are those who are from there. But I stretch my hands. Kogi state. May that anointing come upon anyone associated with that territory that is under the yoke of bondage. Be free now. Be free now. Kogi state. Be free now. Be free now. God does these things that men will fear him. My sister, look at me. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Something is leaving you. This is what I'm seeing. For you and for your family members. Let that devil never return to you again. In the name of Jesus Christ. We look to Yahweh. Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh. Yahweh. I'm hearing a name, Agnes. Prophecy takes a lot of time. So we'll just minimize it so that I'm hearing the name Agnes. 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 I'm hearing that name. Please very quickly because I want to take our time and... God is visiting three families at Overflow 2. Overflow 2, the overflow by the roadside. I just saw an anointing. Just like fire. Three families. Three families by the Spirit of the Living God. Agnes. Who is Agnes? You are Agnes. You are Agnes. Your sister. No, you are not here for your sister. You are here for yourself. Come. Hold my hands. In the name of Jesus Christ, this spirit must let you go. There is a very violent spirit that, that is attempting to take advantage of this lady's life. I declare now by the spirit of God, the covenant and the ordinance that authorizes you in the life of this lady comes under judgment now. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that violent devil must let you go now even by the spirit of the there is no hiding place in the name of Jesus there is no hiding place for the unfruitful works of darkness I curse you by the God of heaven and I declare you must let her go alongside everything you have planted in her life in the name of Jesus Christ just hold her there I'm going to hold your hand. It's a strange mystery. I'm going to hold your hand, but the person who will fall is on this rope. Bring the person for me. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare, just don't worry, leave the baby. The person who will fall is not this lady. It's on this rope, like this, this rope right to the back. In the mighty name of Jesus, I declare by the Spirit of the living God, that everything that does not name the name of Christ right now I command it must go in the name of Jesus Christ it must go by the grace of God I set you free my dear 
in the name of Jesus let me pray for you father there is please don't be embarrassed we may not prophesy to everyone but there is a woman here don't be embarrassed you just had a miscarriage usually I would not ask you to come but the Lord is asking to come out who is that person please there is a Yoruba family that is under a very strange attack under a strange attack I'm praying right now I don't know where they are but I'm going to pray for you by the spirit please don't confuse the cases so that I can minister to them in the name of Jesus I pray for that family it's a Yoruba family from Quara State Yoruba family from Quara State I'm seeing it by the Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ that family is here or anyone who represents that family I declare freedom right now by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus I pray for you my dear that everything that is not the planting of the Lord the hand of God is upon you and the Lord is saying in the seasons that come, you are going to start having visitations. There is a visitation that God is bringing. And that visitation is preparing you for where he is taking you to. And the Lord is saying that you'll be faithful. In the name of Jesus, I declare it so, even by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you step into that level and that dimension. You are the woman with the miscarriage. You are married. Please don't feel, I hope you are not embarrassed. Don't be embarrassed, huh? Because that's the same way you will come here and testify. Listen, God is not going to embarrass you for nothing. Are we together? Listen, let me tell you this. This is one big family and we're intelligent people. We will never come and just embarrass someone like that. If there's anything that looks embarrassing, just know that these things um, are spiritual. My dear, that young lady, go in. Come, lift your hands. God is not done with you yet. Huh? This is, this is, you would have left this girl now. She would have probably just gone like that. Um, in the name of Jesus Christ, I declare, take what you put in her dream life. Let it live now. Take what you put inside her through the dream. Miscarriage. Please come. Please don't feel embarrassed. This is a family. Did I pray for you? Did I pray for you? It's all right. If I prayed for you, just go back. My dear, put your hand on your stomach. In the name of Jesus, I agree with you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Go and return with your child according to the time of life. No more miscarriage whatsoever. In the name of Jesus, you will return with child according to the time of life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Madam, please place your hand. In the name of Jesus, return with child. Return with child. In the name of Jesus. There is someone here, you are in ministry. I've not done the impartation yet, but I'm seeing an anointing come on you, and this is for your ministry. There is a level of expansion that you have been praying for, and God is about to answer that prayer. I stretch my hands. I don't know where that person is. But in the name that is above all names, may that anointing, like a mighty rushing wind, in the name of Jesus. There's someone here, God, this night, is giving you a ministry to teenagers. An anointing is coming on you, your ministry will be to teenagers. I don't know where that person is, but Lord, I stretch my hands. Right now, may that man to find the person. In the name of Jesus, I birth that ministry by the Spirit. I birth that ministry by the hand of God. Inside here, outside, I declare in the name of Jesus, let there be a birthday. I draw from the boils of prophecy and I declare that ministry is better tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. 
Your sister and you, why is she here? Miscarriage? Are you married? You are sure? In the name of Jesus, place your hand there. I agree with you. Every plague of miscarriage goes now. In the name of Jesus Christ. According to the time of life, return with your child. In the name of Jesus Christ. Your sister, where is she? Abuja. Tell her that she was prayed for and she should expect a miracle. In the name of Jesus, I declare. You're standing in for her, but I declare the power of God is upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are four people who are receiving the mantle for prayer and intercession. Now, I know that it's, it's, a, it's a grace we will all desire, but there are four exact people. Four exact people. Some inside, some outside. Lord, I don't know where they are, but that grace, a dimension of the intercessory ministry, capacity to travail by the Spirit, In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why is she here? Come. Where are you from? Kaduna. How long have you been married? Last year. Last year. Madam, you came out here for miscarriage, but what God is dealing with is more than miscarriage, huh? We'll pray for you. Where's your husband? Here, sir. Because I'm seeing him here. Is he here? Yes, sir. Where is he? Husband, please come. Is the man here? How are you, my friend? Stand up. God is about to change your life. I don't know you. What do you do, sir? Where? I'm up in Kaduna. Sir. Kaduna, I want to pray for you. Where are you from? I'm from Ejiji. There is a grace. Please hear me. What, what, where do you work? I work with the Lion Advertise. There are two things I'm seeing. One, I'm seeing real estate. Number two, I'm seeing distribution. Distribution of things. Go and write them down and pray over them. This is where your money is. This is where the grace of God. You hear what I'm telling you? You see, sometimes God will not violate your will. You can choose to do anything you do. But because of the openness of your heart, he will give you direction. The Lord is my shepherd, he says, I shall not want. So when God directs you, he will take away want and lack from you. And that's why I said this is more than just the issue of barrenness or whatever it is. Huh? We'll pray for you. And madam, I want to stop the dreams. Dreams. Huh? I have to pray for you. Sometimes you don't share them. But there are dreams that are oppressions. A lot of oppressions. I want to pray for you. This will end in your life. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Sir, this is July, August, September. By October, write it down. Your life will change. Do you know what just entered you? You didn't just fall under the anointing. You see, my, my brother, the realm of the spirit, what is on you is what controls what is around you. Don't worry, I'm going to pray for you. It's the grace for favor that came on you. Amen. And I declare and I prophesy over you by the Spirit of God. These three months, may your life change in a way that will surprise you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Madam, put your hand in your, on your stomach. According to the time of life, huh? in the name of Jesus Christ, I'm seeing something like a rope being loosed from your stomach. This is what I'm seeing. In the name of Jesus. Listen, you will come with your wife and stand here. Look at their faces and remember them. 
so that the day they come and stand is is not to glorify a man it is to show that god oh god is still alive huh? i lose this in the name of jesus and i pray for you by the power of the holy spirit you will return with a strange miracle amen. in the name of jesus christ amen and amen sir can i talk to you please this man yes sir where are you coming from sir kaduna, kaduna. i don't know you is it all right if i pray for you i want to pray for you three things number one i want to pray that sickness will not take you to the grave amen. i'm not a prophet of doom this is our our prophet i want to pray for you that's number one number two i want to pray for you that everything that is yours that has not been released let it come to you does it make sense what i'm telling yes, you sir. Yes, sir. i will pray for you this is one of the reasons why you are here i want to pray it will surprise you the way god will release all kinds of financial blessings to come to you and then number three there is a man from lagos that god is going to connect you with god is going to use that man to turn your life around i don't know what you do but please i want you to mark this but the most important prophecy is sickness I want to pray for you because I'm seeing that this thing is an attack. It will start one morning. You just stand up and they will say you are behaving as if you are talking to yourself and you are having memory loss. It's of the devil we must pray. Madam, come. God is about to change your life because you are praying and you are saying God should tell me to speak to you. Is that true? Yes, sir. Stand here. I'm, I'm standing here and I'm hearing your prayer. Yes. And you are saying the Lord should, that should visit yes, you, that you did not come from far for yes, nothing. Sir. Where did you come from? The other side. Come. Yes. Where are the other two people? Yes. We look to Yahweh. Yahweh. congratulate you in the name of Jesus because your life will change in a very remarkable way madam I want to pray for you look at me stand up my friend why by the life here who is sick madam I want to pray for you yes, you see, ba, when prophecy is used well, I'm seeing this woman, your right breast. Huh? If I don't pray for you, yeah. you're going to start having what looks like a goat. <laughs> and it will later become cancer. Because oh, I'm looking at this woman. Jesus. No, don't worry, madam. I'm, don't be afraid. I'm looking at this woman on the bed and just whine. And they say, what is this? What happened to this woman? Jesus. Madam. You did not leave Adamawa State to come here to waste your time. No. Yes, I vowed a vow and prayed a prayer that never should there be a time when I will have the opportunity to minister and the people say, oh, it was just like before. Never, 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 never. That everyone encounter will leave a deposit of God in your life. Hallelujah. Sir, I want to pray for you. He's, where is he coming from? Adamawa too. I need to pray. There is bad luck in your life. Come, you are a very nice man, but please stand up. Please stand up. I don't cry. Oh, yeah. oh dear. You see, but let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, sometimes people are carrying pain. Oh, you just see people laugh and praise the Lord. That that is a dance of faith. It's just a, a joy of faith because I'm looking at this man. You will not believe what this man has gone through. Is that true? What do you do, sir? I'm a laundry. Washing with his hand. Yes. This is what I'm saying. This man, Kai, oh dear. This man is supposed to be connected to a politician in Adamawa State. This is this man's destiny based on what the Lord is showing me. His name is Zakaria. His name is Zakaria. Yes, he's presenting 
This is what I'm telling you. Just listen. Let me prophesy to you. I'm seeing that this man's destiny is supposed to be with a member and yet he's doing... Now, I'm not saying laundry is an insult, but the way he's doing it, this is not a blessing. Um, I don't know what happened. He had a good relationship and just of a sudden, he changed. He changed. No, he did not change. Somebody told him huh, that they can use you to kill him. And that he has, it's not only you. I'm not a pro, don't go around fighting anybody, huh? That this man one day will kill him. They were saying, Honorable Kayankali, be careful. Don't allow people to just come around you like that who already know you. Because the enemy within is outside. That's why he lost relationship with you and cut everything away. You see, let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, God reveals this thing to tell you this world we live in is not a playground. If you don't sustain spiritual intelligence, look at how may your enemies not get to the gate before you. That the counsel of Ahitophel can turn a man's destiny. And this man, it's not that he's using a laundry to washing clothes like, a, like an animal. Sir, you have come here for God to change your life. And I'm praying for you by the God of heaven, the one who put this miracle service together. Let things change now. By the power of the Holy Ghost, I declare favor upon your life. Let things turn around. In the name of Jesus Christ. Mama, what do you want God to do for you? English, how does speak anyone? <laughs> the bad visitation in every area of my family. I will pray for I you. I want male children. <laughs> oh, healing. You have female children. I have two. And you but want I a male. Allergies. Yes, I need male children. That's what, uh, there's a reason why I shifted the mic. I don't want you to say what you're about to say loud, huh? Because one day your husband will be changed and he will hear this, this miracle service message. It's true. I want to pray for you. You see, please let me advise us. It's God that gives children. And, and I don't mean to insult anyone, but please, let's be careful. This issue of give me male children, give me female children, Otherwise, you are not this. I mean, it's even better to come to a man of God to pray for you than to antagonize your wife or husband. There is a culture of the kingdom. Listen, when we get born again, the values, the value system of the kingdom, the spirit life must be at work in us. In as much as I know sincerely that it is beneficial to have children, male and female, when our people are getting married, I pray for them that God will give them children, male and female. But you cannot antagonize your wife or your husband and say, give me um, male children, female children. Of course, I understand I'm, I'm an African because of issues of inheritance and other things. But we have to be careful. Whatever God has not given you, you cannot have it. And if you go to the devil to have it, let me tell you, the consequence will be waiting for you. Are we together? Madam. Look at me. Do you believe if I pray for you, yes, you will come here with a male child? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I told you. Madam, what did you see me doing for you in a dream? Sir, he declared he lives upon my life and you say it is done. Listen, number one, number one, yes, God is bringing favor to your yes, life. Sir. Number two, you will stand on this very altar with a male child. I want you to believe it. You believe that? Hold my hands. Father, please turn the life of this woman in the name of Jesus. Let it please you to open her womb and give her a male child. And we agree, we receive that your husband is born again and he's walking in the ways of God. In the name of Jesus. Madam, the Lord is going to connect you with some, a woman from Maiduguri. Where are you from? I'm from Adama. We have to get it. My okay. Sister. I'm going to pray for you. A, a woman, she does textile and clothing. Kaya, cloth. This woman will bless you in a way that it will look like it's a charm. Yeah. Believe what I'm telling you. 
Father, I decree and declare, surprise these people by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I bless you. God changes your life in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Mama, that mama with blue, come. Who came from Kano? From where? From Air Force Base. Air Force Base. This is your husband. What do you want God to do for him? Don't cry. You know, I preached a message here and I said, God can do it, Abby, madam. Hmm. Since 2005, no child. No message again. Everything has gone. Madam, stand up. Please, if you are in ministry here, hear me. Reduce your public life. Go back to the secret place and get real power. Genuine grace. Genuine grace. Genuine grace. Let me repeat it, please. If you are in ministry, I say this, please, reduce public life, watching football, going for marriages that you don't have any business to. I'm not saying you should not honor people, but the times that we're living in now, the problems on people is not just sermons. People are in real trouble. We must trust God for grace to stay in the spirit until you get something genuine that can solve people's problems. 2005, how many years is that? 14 years, no child, her period ceased completely, the devil sat on it. Let me see how you have a child. Madam, don't cry, it's okay. I don't know you, I've never seen you. You can see, how will you be sitting there and then God will just call you. I want to pray for you. Madam, please hear me. I'm saying it in the open. I didn't say it in your ears. I want you to go and prepare. Huh? I'm seeing Where is your husband? Anybody who wants to come and destroy your family by giving you something to drink, eh? In the name of Temeko, I I I banish them far. You hear what I'm saying? Because I'm seeing a man, I'm not, please, I love the body of Christ, but I'm seeing someone come, supposedly a prophet, but what this man is doing is not prophecy. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Six months now. I'm, I'm the only one. Six months? Yes. He has gone away. He, he just, I, I went to his office to tell him that I'm coming to Zaria today. So he now said, uh, he just looked at me. You are not divorced, <laughs> but he has just gone. He's, he just went, but you're not divorced. Uh, he's saying uh, where, they are, where they are drinking this thing, so he just left me. He may not, don't, don't be too quick to judge the man. See, let me tell you this. You see, Ba, when people go through things, be careful. When you are about to cross people and call them evil and call them this, remember that stability is according to the measure of your understanding of who God is. And there are times that even the strong get pushed to the wall. So don't be too quick. We are people of love. Don't come here and start thinking and saying, especially if you know the woman and think the husband is this. Mm -mm. We are not here to show who is right or who is wrong. We are here to show that there is a God in heaven. Are we together? Madam, hold my hands. I command this spirit in the name that is above all names to release your womb in the name of Jesus. Madam, I speak to you First, may God reconcile you back to your husband. Second, you will take in according to the time of life. Your baby will stay and you will return back to the child. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every orchestration that is not of God to keep you barren and to destroy your marriage, I curse it now in Jesus' name.
See, anyone here, I'm, I'm praying for the ladies now, then we'll pray for the sick. We have to be fast. But no, you don't have to come out. But you are here, the moment you start a relationship with a guy, he becomes serious. And just when he's deciding to do anything marriage, it must scatter. You continue to enter relationships, relationships, re loving and unloving, loving and unloving. Today you are in love, tomorrow nonsense manufactures itself. I'm praying right now by the anointing of the Holy Spirit because it's a yoke that must be destroyed. I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, inside and outside, anyone who is under that category, by the God of heaven, let the power of God come on you now to end that captivity. Let the power of God come on you now to end that captivity. You see, please give this woman her photo, that woman under the anointing. We have to pray. Um, the Lord is asking me, we are praying. I, I hope I'm not boring you. I'm not wasting your time. The Lord is showing me a family here. I may not ask you to come out, but in this family, you will never settle maritally, but you will have children. No matter how you go around it, you find out that you have children out of marriage, out of, and, and it's not like the men will be there to take responsibility and take care of the children. The Lord wants to deliver that family right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Ah. Why is she coming out? Why is she coming out? The, the family is... She just came out on her own. No, don't worry. Well, she's, she's, she's crying because of her pain. It's possible she's part of that family. But I'm going to pray. Whether you know it or not. You see, the thing about the anointing, I told you. Sometimes God locates people distinctly just to talk to them, to encourage and build their faith. But it doesn't matter where you are. I want to pray now that... that you cannot get married happily with a ring and settle down and have children. But the devil will manipulate that you will continue to have children. I pray right now. I don't know where they are. But in the name of Jesus Christ. We declare that that yoke is destroyed now. We declare that that yoke is destroyed now. That yoke is destroyed now. My dear, look at me. Come. It's your season of laughter. The Lord is saying I should tell you. You see, let me tell you. For all the pain that you've gone through, I want you to hear me. God himself is turning your life around. Because... Let me remind you, even as he has reminded you, that it pays to serve Jesus. Sometimes you will look foolish while you are doing it. Let me encourage someone here. It pays to serve Jesus. It may not look like he will come every day, but the day he comes, he will come with dignity and honor and lift you in a way that whoever has laughed at you will have to bend their head in shame. I'm praying for you. Hold my hands. Father, in Jesus' name, confirm your word. You have said that it's a season of laughter. I call it so and I declare that everything that stands as a blockage to your joy and laughter leaves your way now. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, someone will run out under the anointing. Hold the person and bring the person out. That will be the last prophecy. The power of God is coming on someone. It's not something you can control. By the anointing, you will find yourself rushing out by the Spirit. Please. When that happens, bring the person. I need to speak to the person and then we'll pray for the sick right now. It's a very strange anointing and you will find yourself rushing out by the Spirit. Meanwhile, let this lady come. My dear, hold my hands. Let it end now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let it end now. In the name of Jesus, I'm rebuking something you don't know anything about. But in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, it goes now over by the grace of God. 
there are two ladies here. Only married men look for you. A, a responsible, godly gentleman will never seem to be interested in you. But when you find a married man, sometimes with children, that's the one that will come to you. I'm praying. I know there may be many people, but these are two people in the name that is above all names. I declare right now, whatever is on you that continues to compel married men, in the name of Jesus, I curse that spirit now. I curse something is burning here. I curse that spirit now. I curse that devil now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Don't be embarrassed, but I see the spirit of lust on this lady. I stretch my hands. Let that devil leave you now. That a man cannot come and pass this lady quietly and successfully. There's something that must continue to draw in the name of Jesus. By the spirit of the living God, I curse that spirit. And I declare it must let you go now. It must release you now. By the God of heaven, I declare be free from that spirit right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We're going to pray for the sick. Our time is gone, but we have to do this very fast. And like I said, please, please listen. All the people who will be praying for you, I just want you to believe um, whether you are in overflow, one, two, three, if you are trusting God for the fruit of the womb, please not standing for anybody. And aside from those who are prayed for, if you are trusting God for the fruit of the womb, then join the prayer line here. I want to pray for you myself. Just the fruit of the womb. Are we together? Now, of course, all who are here, you can come for your normal prayer. But particularly, if you, are, if you came here trusting God for the fruit of the womb, this, this fruit of the womb issue is becoming a serious issue. And we need to deal with it once and for all. Now, we're going to do this fast. All the people ministering to you will do it very, very fast and pray for you. While you are doing that, please, how many of us came with our prayer requests? For those of us who are visitors, there's still room for you. You can quickly pen down your request and wave it. Ushers will be moving around to collect PR. Please help them. And let's just make this very fast and make this snappy. But overflow one... Um, overflow two overflow three and then the overflow from the building right to second equa and down let's call that overflow four okay okay there is there is overflow two b then there is overflow four please listen this is overflow one this is overflow two there is overflow two b from this place right to the roadside, second equa down. Then there's overflow four, just from the gate of overflow three. Then we have overflow three in the main building. And then online. Please make your way, come out and stand according to those various overflows. There will be people there to minister to you right now. We'll do it very fast. Our time is gone. Please submit your prayer request. I'll be laying hands on all of them here right now. You can just wave them. There will be someone by your side. We apologize for those of you standing because your seats were foiled. You would soon have it back and then be back to your seat. If there are visitors, some of you who are members, clear the way for them. They can sit down temporarily, please. If you are here, you are part of us, you can allow them to sit on your seat pending when their seats will be. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord.
Please rise up on your feet. Thank you for your patience. Stretch your hands to this request. Please, if there are still requests um, that are not here, let's have them here very quickly so that we can pray. Please understand that this is not a ritual. God really answers prayers. There is a God in heaven who is in this service. This is a prophetic representation of our pain, our expectations. There may not be time to speak to everyone. There may not be time to minister to everyone as we would want to. But then I want us to agree right now. Stretch your hands and begin to pray in the spirit. As I lay my hands upon this request, we are declaring that every request here must be turned into a testimony. Abaratos calabrandege baratos kedi. Abratos adege baratos shalekatos. Ente prata salagato brati kedi. Karusa tapradisha. Stretch your hands and believe. We are declaring God is answering prayers now. Hallelujah. I stand upon with my bare foot on this prayer request and I declare by the Spirit of God. Even as God has instructed me, I declare that every request here by the Spirit of grace, let it be turned into your testimony. That in the name of that is above all names. There are, hold on please. There are people here, this is a death sentence. There are people here, this is an impossible situation. There are people here, God will, the person God will talk to is far. But I pray, what looks impossible, I bow my knees to the God of heaven, the one who honors me when I pray. And I convert every request here to a testimony this night. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living Lord. I decree and I declare by the spirit of faith that by this time next month you return here rejoicing. the devil lie to you and say it will be as it has always been. Uh-uh. 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 Every anointing that must be released towards your direction for this prayer to be answered, we release it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. And every pattern that is not just an individual but is a pattern that is written here as God is visiting you here every other person connected to you whose request you have written here we command a miracle for them where they are in the name of Jesus Christ There are situations here that need the blood. I declare by the mystery of the blood. There are three that bear witness in the heavens. The Father, the Word, and the Spirit. There are three that bear witness in the earth. The Spirit, the water, and the blood. In the name of the Lord God of heaven, 
by the mystery of the blood of the eternal covenant we cancel every ordinance that sponsors continuity of this request in the name of Jesus and the king could not sleep in the night and he said bring me the chronicles and he saw there written what Mordecai did whoever must remember you for this request to be granted by the God of heaven we open the book of remembrance tonight any man holding what belongs to you which is the reason why you are writing anything here we put pressure on them to release it now every family here webbed in shame and reproach it looks like there is no dignity the speakings of God does not seem to find expression here I agree with you tonight by the God of heaven please help those under the anointing that by the power of the Holy Ghost shame and reproach ends this night shame and reproach ends this night shame and reproach ends this night Therefore, I decree and declare that these Egyptians you have dropped here, by the God of heaven, may you see them no more forever. May you see them no more forever. The same way I stand upon this request, I command that you stand upon every challenge. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now I speak over your life. The doors that have followed you here closed in the name of Jesus please believe let your don't be distracted focus on the Word of God in the name of Jesus I command those doors be open now be open now be open now be open now every grounded ministry here every grounded business every grounded family hear the word of the lord i command and i declare come back to life come back to life come back to life come back to life every helper assigned from god who has not yet paid attention to you and what you request I stand by the God of heaven and in the name of Jesus I compel them to attend to your matters I compel them to attend to your matters I compel them to attend to your matters everything that should have happened and has not yet happened according to the program of God you know you should have entered that level and you are not there by prophecy I push you to that level by prophecy I push you to that level listen you see let me tell you what I'm doing I'm not just speaking I'm placing something upon your life you may not see it but you leave this place and watch what happens to you then you will see things turn around let me pray for you the kind of favor that must bring acceleration to your life please receive this one in the name that is above all names may that mantle like a cloak take favor take favor carry favor carry favor in the name of Jesus every area you have struggled in your life you have done what you know to do in the name of Jesus I declare that that struggle comes to end now now please listen 
the anointing your destiny needs for this season please listen every season has a grace requirement every season there are doors that don't just open because you stand in front of them yesterday's anointing will not move you to tomorrow's place i pray for you this is an impartation wherever you are i declare like the dew of heaven the kind of grace you must carry for this season let it land on your destiny now by this anointing i forbid you from being ignored in the name of jesus christ i forbid you from being ignored i forbid you from being trivialized no man will look down on you they came to jesus and said rabbi we know that thou art a man sent from god for no man can do these things except god be with him the things that must be done through your hands in this season for it to be said this is the lord's doing as you are lifting your hands may a fresh unction from heaven come upon those hands for exploits anyone in ministry here i declare over you go back to your various assemblies and platforms let there be fire on your altar fire on your altar fire on the ministration let the gifts of the spirit work powerfully in the name of jesus we're rounding up let's pray over our finances this issue of finance is bringing many people to their knees bringing many families to their knees distracting people the time we should spend on the things of the kingdom we are focusing on money what to eat what to wear house rent building projects it is not the will of god in the name of jesus christ ebenezer the helper of men I declare this month even beginning from today receive strange financial help receive strange financial help in the name of Jesus I prophesy to you strange financial help everyone under the sound of my voice trusting God for an honorable job listen there are jobs that don't have honor they are time wasters. They are devourers. I pray for you. The kind of job that represents dignity. That will honor you and help you to build your home well. May the God of heaven give you such a job. Let me pray for your spiritual life. If you have cars, you have houses, and your spiritual life is not on fire, you are not doing well. The first index to measure prosperity in the kingdom is the health of your spiritual life. That your prayer life fire, word life fire, fellowship with the spirit fire. No room for up today, down tomorrow. I pray for you, fresh fire upon your prayer life. 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 Every lukewarmness, slumber, gluttony, these spirits that destroy your spiritual fervency, I declare in the name of Jesus, receive victory over them. The grace that can keep a man in the presence of God, the, the staying power that you can stay with the world, stay in prayer, not rushing and rush out and one power. God is not a magician. I pray for you. The unction to stay. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Every dimension in the spirit 
that is supposed to have been activated. There are some of you now, listen, there are levels of graces you should have left. Sincerely, there are dimensions of power. There are haziness, certain dimensions of haziness in your spiritual perception. There is a level of authority. There is an office you should be sitting on now, but it's not yet there. I pray for you. The mantle that will shift you to that level, may that grace come upon you now. The mantle that will shift you to that level. May that grace come upon you now. Listen. Everything in your life that has refused to grow. God gave you a ministry that has refused to grow. No membership, nobody is placing a demand on your grace. God gave you a business, it has refused to grow. No increase, no impact. Anything that is alive grows. Whatever has stopped growth in your life, I bring that thing to an end now. Finally, let me pray, please. The spirit of infirmity. I told you that this is, this is, I came to pray and rebuke that spirit. Because that spirit, like the angel of death, is moving over families, attacking children, attacking all kinds of people. Headache will just kill a man for nothing. Kata, and they will say it's cancer. Pain around your breast. They will say you have a malignant, a tumor. See, let me tell you. Whatever you don't fight to victory will remain in your life. Challenges are not the issue. But that you stand and fight the good fight of faith. Until you see what God said. If you have not seen what God said, don't stop. I pray for you. The spirit of a warrior. The grace that will cause you to refuse to allow things that are not the will of God. May that grace rest upon you now. As a body of believers, we agree that the spirit of infirmity first over this family, number two over this territory, and number three over the body of Christ. Thou spirit of infirmity, we banish your operation now. Thou shalt not be afraid of the arrows that fly by day, nor the noisome pestilence, the destruction that wasted at noonday, the spirit of death. If there is anyone here, that death is looming around the corridors of your life. All your loved ones, all those connected to you, spiritually and by bloodline, I declare, let death lose its grip over you now. Receive the last prayer that I pray for you to end this miracle service. And Jabez, was more honorable than his brethren. Please listen. Honor is a real grace. You can do everything to bring honor and yet honor will not come. Honor is not about usurping authority over people. There is a real grace because thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore God, even thy God has anointed you with an oil of gladness that sets you above your fellows. I pray for you. The kind of honor that needs to distinguish you for the sake of the kingdom in this season. May that grace and may that honor rest upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Wave your hands everywhere and give Jesus praise. Mighty God. Wave your hands and give Jesus praise. Father, we thank you. By the wave offering we receive, we receive in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Please drop your hands.
Please let me say this. Let there be no movement till we are done. Every time we are almost done, many of you cancel out everything God has done through disobedience. Just give me two minutes and then we must leave. There are people here who are yet to truly surrender their life. Please keep standing. We believe in soul winning. And in reality, we believe that it is the greatest miracle. There are people here who came to this place confused, looking for Jesus sincerely. Religion refused to give you. Sometimes we men of God disappointed you, but you are still looking for Jesus. And there are others who are saying, Apostle, I love Jesus, but the way my life is right now, I need help. Now, whatever, whether you are inside, outside, we have two minutes for you. Please, win that war this night. Don't sit down dilly-dallying. You know that you need Jesus. Wherever you are, inside, outside, I don't want you to be ashamed. Aside from overflow 3, overflow 2B, and overflow floor, you can just move to your various projector screens. But you are here, quickly. I'd like you to run like there's fire on the mountain and stand here right now. Quickly. I don't expect you to be thinking about it. Keep standing. It's something you should know. Keep coming. Run to Jesus. Don't let any friend hold your hand and say, don't embarrass yourself. Don't let any relative keep you bound. Our time is gone, but your salvation is important. Keep coming. Keep coming. Apostle, I want to come, but I'm ashamed. Win that war and come. Apostle, I want to come, but I'm not sure if I'm saved or not. If you are not sure, make your way and come quickly. Apostle, I'm a leader in my fellowship. Join them quickly. We have one more minute, please. Those coming from outside, quickly. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Those online following from whatever nation, doesn't matter. Once you are following and you can hear my voice, listen to me, please. Believers, listen. It is important that we never lose out on soul winning. Let me say this. It is not just an evangelical agenda. It is not an orthodox agenda. It is not a man of God agenda. It is the only way men come to this kingdom. No matter what we do, please, you're a man of God here, hear me. Don't be careless over soul winning. It is important that people be given an opportunity, except you don't know what salvation is. If you really understand what the new birth is, you will desire even your enemy to be saved. It is the only gateway. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave. Salvation is a giver's gift to you. You receive. I salute all of you who have come here. Some of you are standing here rededicating your lives. Some of you are not even sure what you are doing honestly. Some of you are here genuinely for the first time. It doesn't matter. You see, the thing about the love of God is that the moment you call on his mercy, he will act as though he's not seeing what is wrong with you again. The mercy of God is powerful. Religion is what drives people away from God. Lift your right hand. Those around the various overflows, join them. Please say after me, sincerely, Jesus is in this place. You are not reciting a poem. This is from the depth of your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you that you are the Son of God. This night, I receive Jesus as my Savior, my Lord, and my King. I declare that according to Scripture, I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and I declare that I'm not only heaven bound but I reign in life I receive of the Holy Spirit from today I declare 
and forever that I'm a child of God. Amen. I declare over you by the authority of scripture that your sins are forgiven. The Lord himself is granting you a new beginning. I pray that you will know the ministry of the Holy Spirit in a new and a fresh way. I pray for you that you will know the anointing in a mighty way. For many of you who are standing here, may God use you to become mighty men and women of God. In the name of Jesus, I bless you with hunger for spiritual things. I bless you with passion for the house of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. A big congratulations. Now, please, I want all of you alongside um, those at the various overflows. There should be someone waving his or her hands. Please, I'd like you to follow them very quickly. And there will be a group of people who will address you. Let's do that very quickly. Let's do that quickly. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Hallelujah. Now, our time is gone, but... Um, Please listen, we're about to take the announcements. Welcome the first timers and we're done. I sincerely apologize. Pray for us by God's grace. I know that God will grant us the grace. We'll soon have our place and we'll reschedule our services to allow us finish on time. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, I, I, know, I welcome everybody. We're going to welcome the first timers now. But particularly, I just want to honor a few people. First, I want to bless our precious people the delegates from um the king's court and the oasis god bless you <laughs> hallelujah the redeemed christian church of god that's um that's the church that nathaniel bassi pastors god bless you thank you there are a group of people here adorable people these people take they take care of me so much every time we have a meeting around their place and um we love you. Thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your kindness. I want us to honor the pastor from Ukraine. Bless you. Bless you. Thank you very much. And um, now I know there are so many people. Please don't find offense. It's by no way belittling you. Every We believe the law of honor is one of our foundational um, values, our pillars here. I just felt I am indebted to some of the people that are connected to these ones. And so I just wanted to to do that honor and i think i hope i'm right yes it should be him um i saw elisha maman somewhere he just squeezed himself that's him may god bless you very humble and very great man i love you may the lord bless you in the name of jesus every other person who has come here especially for those of you who came from so very far um aside from those that i called within a few minutes i'll request that you come um and stand here so that we will honor you we believe in honor and i know that in many churches they have different ways of receiving people but we don't fake things and we don't pretend things here when we call you out to honor you we really mean it it's not some christian stage managed acting no genuinely sincerely so wherever you are aside from the extreme overflows i would request that you just move to the front of your projector stand but for those of us who are here, overflow one, overflow two, please gallantly walk and come right here. If this is your first time worshiping with us, we want to honor you. You're that important and we love you. Koinonia, is this the best you can do? Hallelujah. Please stand. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. Let them come while I talk because of time. Keep coming. Let me tell you this. You see, it's all right. Praise God. Just listen to me while they come. It's a lesson that I want to teach all of us. Please learn this. Never take men for granted. When, when God honors you, please hear me, pastors. I tell you why we stop getting members in our churches. Because we get to points where we believe we are too big to honor the people. In other words, they don't mean anything. I always thank God and appreciate every one person who takes the pain to come here. Thank God for the wonderful things that he's doing. But remember that nobody is obliged anywhere to honor you and to promote what you represent. And when you find a people who can make such investments, value them. 
Are we together? Whether you are a pastor, whether you are a businessman, this world is the world of men. Place honor on men. He says, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Influence is your blessing when you honor men. Thank you so much, every one of you. I wish I had the time to really walk to you one by one and hug every one of you. And I mean it from the depth of my heart. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And then if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season, it is still dry season spiritually, financially and otherwise. I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain.